Hello, hello, good afternoon. Double checking the time to make sure I know exactly what I'm saying. It's Sunday, guys. I've never done a Sunday live before, so thank you for stopping by. This is a going to be a quiet one because I can't take over the whole house today. So rather than doing the typical yelling, screaming, and goofing around that I usually do, we're going to respect people and we're going to keep it a little bit quiet today. So I'm going to start putzing around with some letters and then see what, what everybody's up to. Love taking some requests and seeing what people are thinking, what they have on their mind. Tell me what we're doing is, uh, you know, kind of help us make some suggestions. Love to know how people live, how people use their homes and, uh, and all that. So what we're going to do today, let me write it across the top. Uh, wait, can you see that? Oh yeah. Yeah. So we're going to do another alphabet house. And if you don't know what that means or don't know who I am, my name is Dory. And I've been doing floor plans lately in the shape of letters of the alphabet. And today, put it somewhere there, we're going to tackle the letter L. So what I like about the letter L is, as it relates to a floor plan anyways, is it's not super crazy like a Q or a W or anything like that that's been causing me some serious grief lately. So let's, uh, let's pick a scale here. The first thing I'm going to do is always pick a scale. And 3.30 seconds seems, is it gonna fit on the screen, guys? This is, these are the dilemmas. Pick a scale that works on a screen. <laughs> so alphabet house, if we do that, and we use 3.30 seconds of an inch, let's go 24 feet wide for that. So there, that'll be, oh, it's gonna be a big chunky L. All right, and then let's, uh, geez, I don't know, we're picking random, random places here, but let's go out 24 feet there also. No, let's go more. Let's go, I don't know, 30, something like that. It's an L, you know, L's come in different proportions and shapes and all those, all those things, like every other letter in the alphabet. But let's, let's start with an L. Let's ink that up and see how it's going to look. So can you guys see that okay? Somebody talk to me. Where's everybody from today? Where I am in southwestern Ontario, Canada, it is rainy, it is overcast. So I'm sitting by a, a nice big window um, that's full of raindrops right now. Can't really see outside too well. Actually, I can. I'm lying. I just lied to you guys. Hopefully that's the last one today. But uh, no, it's kind of a cool day though, which is always good for me. Mm. So also, if you're new to the... I'm also sipping on my coffee here as well. So if you hear me take a little break. Manitoba in the house. What's up, Manitoba? Thanks for stopping by. I almost had a project in Manitoba last year just outside of Brandon and um, met with them. It went really, really well, but I think my fee was a little too high for them, so it never happened. Vancouver, what's up, Vancouver? What are we? we must be on lunch out in Vancouver, quarter to one or so, something like that. San Diego back again. San Diego, you are awesome. Thank you for stopping back again. I always... Um, so I'm going to try to remember usernames too, because it's hard to draw and read comments and usernames at the same time, so I'm trying to learn everybody. Um, where exactly? We go to McGregor Bay each summer. I'm in Missouri. I don't know where McGre uh, McGregor Bay is. I'm in southwestern Ontario, uh, right near Detroit, like across the river from Detroit. So Missouri, very nice. Denver, love it. Love Denver. What was I, I was just talking about Denver, what was it, yesterday, the day before. Somebody, uh, we were talking about, um, well, Red Rocks, I think, is just outside of Denver, but we were at a concert talking about cool venues, and uh, Red Rocks definitely came up. So... Let's get designing. Got a handful of people here. I think we're pretty cool. Another Vancouver. Right on, guys. So so Vancouver, it's I don't mean to be cliche. I've never I've only passed through Vancouver Airport. I've never had a chance to visit, but it's super rainy over here and gloomy. So um I need some moral support on that. Chicago. Oh, I love Chicago. I will be in Chicago next month. Uh I am coming to uh, do the cliche Frank Lloyd Wright stuff, but I'm also going to see uh, a concert as well. So I'll be there for probably 48 of the best hours of my life. <laughs> it's sick and rain over here. Yeah. Imagine Toronto. What's up, Toronto? Love you guys. I'm a hardcore Leafs fan, if that matters to anybody from Toronto. Actually, oh, what a, what a segue. I didn't even mean to do that. But today, uh, the L is for, I think it's going to be for Leafs uh, when I ultimately post this thing. 
um, because I really want, uh, I want the Leafs to, uh, I want to get their attention, you know, for all the energy I've given them, the least they can do is give me a double tap. <laughs> so this is our, our letter L house here, guys. That's our road. What's the name of our road going to be? I like to try to name them. Um, let's do, I don't know. Somebody give me, what are we naming our road? Maybe one of the cities everybody's checking in from or not. We'll see. See if anybody chimes in with a really clever road name. So I will, so let's talk guys. Here's, let me, let me sort, sort of show you my process and, uh, ah, Maple Road. That could work. That's like a real, that's, I'm sure that's a real road in like a hundred different places too. Uh, Alpine, Lagos, Freedom Street, Freedom. All right. So let's, uh, let's see if more of those suggestions come in, but let's, let's get working on this. So I think the way I read the L is kind of like this, <laughs> Rainy Street. Yeah, no kidding. Be a good one for today. Um, I kind of read it like this. So if I, if I could break it into two pieces, um, it's always, I always have a lot of luck designing long linear um, spaces to lay out floor plans. It's just really conducive to, uh, you know, a healthy amount of wall space for windows. Uh, length gives us opportunities to do corridors or hallways front to back. And so that's, uh, that I think I'm going to reserve that space for all the living spaces of the house. So kitchen, living room, dining room, um, bedrooms, um, stairs, all of that. So then I kind of see this, the, uh, other part of the L here as something that would serve well as a garage and maybe a mud room or a pantry or a, you know, a small bathroom that could be used for outdoor purposes. But there's also another opportunity that's presenting itself here, guys. Oh, you got to give me one second because I got to show you one of my favorite pens. Ooh, I'm going to drop something here. Bear with me. Uh, one of my favorite pens or styles of pen. Let me show you. Not the five. I don't have my 08. It's these white gel pens. So I really like these because they... Um, well, it's white ink, first of all, but anytime uh, I draw on, uh, I draw black lines, I'm able to draw over top of them. So you kind of get this um, uh, x-ray thing happening. So, <laughs> but I got to get it working first. Um, yeah, I didn't think I'd be using these today, so I am not prepared. Sundine Road, winner. We are working on Sundine Road. Oh, somebody knows the way to my heart. Uh, <laughs> for anybody who doesn't know, Sundin is the last name of a legendary Toronto Maple Leaf, Matt Sundin, who, well, he didn't bring me a Stanley Cup. He brought me tons of joy to watch him play hockey. So awesome. Sundin Road. Very cool. Um, so let's say we're going to have our garage door here and that will, you know, come down and connect to the road. Um, like that. Then what we're going to do, so the other opportunity we have, and let me know if you guys think this is a cool feature to have in a house or not, is the ability to pull your car uh, into the front of the garage, but also straight through and maybe into the back, or at least have that door that gives you access to the backyard like that. Uh, when do you plan, I, and I'm gonna bounce back and forth between comments and drawing here, guys. So let's see, when do you plan on doing the Y house? Why do you ask? Oh, that was awful. The reason, uh, I don't know why is, um, I have a really fun idea that I want to do <laughs> for why. Um, I just haven't gotten to it, but you know what we're going to do today? Uh, I think this L one is going to go quick. So, um, we are going to do, um, let's, let's play around with some why ideas after we are done with this L. If that's all right with everyone, meh, mine was the best. What was yours? What was yours? Let me know. So, okay. So do you guys like passing through a garage like that? Yes or no? Let me know. Uh, and I'm going to continue drawing. So if we have spaces here, this would make a good uh, mud room here. Again, if you watch any of my previous videos, I anytime we have a room adjacent to a garage, I like to have the access door from the garage into the house near the trunks of the car. Um, you know, just today I ran out and grabbed some groceries and it's, <laughs> I don't have this feature in my house, but it's a really convenient thing to walk in and, uh, straight through from whatever goods you're bringing in from the trunk. So side entrance to the garage would make the facade more appealing. Frankie, thanks for stopping by my friend. Yes, it, it would, it could. And, uh, what, um, the suggestion Frankie's making is what if, what if the door was on the side of the garage here and the driveway entered 
or approach from this side. Uh, that would give us more opportunity to do, um, uh, have a little more fun with the front elevation. But on the side, we would really need a lot of uh, property to make that turn and make that happen. So depending on the width of the property, you're absolutely right. We could do that. Uh, why do people want a room made of mud? No idea. I don't even know why it's called a mud room. I think it's just meant to represent a space where you could drop, you know, dirty things before they got dragged into the house. So I don't know. I got to look that up. How many architectural historians are on with us today? So if this was the room of mud or the mud room, and we would have a space there available. So from here now, we have to take a look at how we want to enter the house and how we want to lay out everything else. So here is here is how I'm I'm seeing this, guys. And tell me um, uh, how you feel about the way I'm going to break this down. So if we dedicate this kind of X space up here, let's call that the yard. Okay, so Frankie, we're going to make a decision here. Um, the property lines are running down the side. Okay, and we're going to, yeah, these are probably unrealistic setbacks, but we are going to say for the sake of this argument that there is not enough room to do a proper side entry garage. So that's the decision we're making. And the reason I wanted to make that decision is it gives us an opportunity to make this a real focal point of the yard here. Okay, so when looking at that, we want to decide what spaces or what rooms are going to have connection to this area, whether it be physical connection or visual connection. Um, so physical connection would be, you know, if we put the uh, bedroom at the back here, we could put a patio door and they would have a physical connection to that yard area there. Or, grab my best friend, the eraser here. Or, um, the, <clears throat> excuse me, the other approach we could have is, is to do a hallway all the way down that side and um, stack the rooms on one side so that nobody has physical access, but everybody as they're walking to their rooms would have this beautiful view, floor to ceiling glass uh, overlooking that yard. So, and then the other thing we want to think about is who, what, what spaces are going to benefit most from that view. So, do I want to, and let's call this the, the, you know, maybe we don't have a large backyard. So this, this is really our, our, our money space here. So maybe we want to take a look at um, the spaces that we are going to, the indoor spaces that we're going to be using the most that <laughs> while we're awake to benefit from these spaces. So maybe um, an approach we want to take is to have the kitchen, living room, dining room somewhere at the back. So at least we have access to patios and maybe a swimming pool and, and all those in and out connections that would make, uh, that would be an extension of the living space. So I'm going to still work in pencil here. Can you guys see my pencil lines or do I need to press a little, do I need to get a little stronger here or just drink more coffee and get all jittery and draw it five times over? Bedroom at Sundean Road, short pass that opens up. <laughs> Oh man, you are killing me. You are good at this. That is funny. Yeah. So that would make, uh, that would give us a really long lanky house, which I'm pretty cool with. And uh, I may have to, I usually add color at the end. So I may have to do like blue and yellow or something like that to just round it out so far. So, kitchen so far from garage and grocery bags. Very true. Very good point. Um, so what else can we do to combat that? Use different colors. Yeah, I will use different colors for sure. So Yes, the kitchen really far. And these are these are the balances that we we need to juggle when we're designing a house, right? So if I put the kitchen, like what are the priorities? So if I put the kitchen right here, right? Okay, kitchen, great. Now bringing groceries in is very convenient. Um, but maybe when we're entering the house now, the, you know, do you necessarily want your kitchen to be there or do we want the kitchen maybe more in the center of the house so it can access the backyard a little bit easier? Um, so we have some thinking to do there. Now, it's not, not a terrible idea. I mean, it doesn't have to be in the garage. Everything's a balance, right? So kitchen in center of that long space, oh, like a central kitchen right here. Um, also, you know, before we get too far, guys, we need to establish some parameters here. So how many, how many bedrooms are we thinking here? 24 by 60. This is 13, 1400 square feet. We should be able to get three like okay size bedrooms or maybe two 
more generous bedrooms with a lot better living space. Get in by living room. Yeah, kitchen in the long space. Okay, so let's let's say that we Okay, let's try a couple of approaches here because I got lots of paper that we get to work work through today. So let's do this. Let's look at what our options could be. We could put the front entry here and you know create an entryway like that. We could do our bedrooms here and then we could have you know kitchen, dining, you know, island in the kitchen, uh, great room, maybe something in the corner like that. Not sure. But this, this, this is what I would call a format. Okay. We could do the living spaces in the back bedrooms and bathrooms up here, and then sort of garage and entry spaces there. Okay. So this, this is kind of could work in a sense where it gives everybody, uh, access to the side yard there. And, uh, it opens up to the back with the kitchen, living room, dining room. So there's big views out the back, which could work very well. And then um, seeing some two bedroom with a study, kitchen, two bedrooms in rear. Yeah, so we could do, if we did a bed, bed, and then this space in the middle could be uh, bathrooms, closets. Uh, you know, we can make a lot of space for that. And then if that's the case, I would probably do a washroom here or a powder room that would work well for um for guests. Um, before I go any further, I gotta have you, I gotta hear from you guys. Who, what do you call a room with a toilet and a sink in it? Is it a bathroom? Is it a washroom? Um, what what is your default language? Because I find myself I jump between bathroom and washroom so often, um, and uh, yeah, uh, they're kind of interchangeable. Powder room I reserve for something that's just a toilet and sink. We call it a bathroom, half bath. Bathroom, bathroom, we're civilized here. Bathroom, half bath, possibly a guest bed in the front. Behind that opens up to living kitchen, second bedroom in the back. A small guest too. Water closet, just a half bath. I call that a washroom. Yeah, there's a Maclash, Maclask. Where are you from to call it a washroom? Because I get the feeling that these are like geographic terms as well, that somebody from one part of the world would call it one thing and somebody would call it in French is water room or powder room. Yeah. God, I love, I wish I could speak French. Um, okay. So that was one option guys. The other option too, is we can take a look at flipping that concept. So if we did the living spaces up at the front, so if we had some format of kitchen, dining room, living room entry here, and let's just, let's just, um, grid it off like that. So if we had an entry, um, let's call this a living room, dining, Oh no, that won't make sense. Let's do kitchen here and dining here. The reason I flipped those is because the kitchen will have cabinets around it. The dining room won't, so that'll leave us room for doors to access that backyard. And then from here, we could either do a hallway down the middle and have rooms on each side all the way around. So um, it would really limit who has access to that. And that that's a pretty popular format for a style like this especially if we had to fit multiple rooms but if not we could definitely do that hallway along the exterior wall and maybe um uh, something we could we could divide spaces like that so if this is a bedroom uh we could do bed oops, bed bath we could work that out somewhere there so that the there's a hallway there that has access to the yard, the main bedroom at the back would have lots of room um, and opportunities to access the back too. If we had our, our entry here, we could do a little porch off the front and connect our sidewalk. Okay, that's another option for the letter L, for capital L. Okay, coffee time, guys. One sec, scare this over. Let me know where, how we're feeling. Maybe flip the cabinets to the back wall. This kitchen here or... This kitchen, oh, we don't really have a kitchen there. This is the kitchen that maybe you're referring to. Yeah, they're kind of both on walls already, if we did like a typical L-shaped kitchen. Um, so there is, so that's an option. Another option, and uh, this in the brainstorming process, guys, we really give ourselves, uh, at least I personally, give myself a lot of permission to just um, 
not prejudge an idea until it's down on paper and, you know, kind of half test it because that way, um, you know, even if you don't use the whole concept, at least maybe there's like a little piece of that that like, you know, oh, I really like the way those closets engage with each other or, or something like that. So another option, if it's even possible, I don't know, is to split the whole house front to back, making one side bedrooms and one side uh, open. Now, there, this is a very long, thin way to do that. And it might not result in the best room sizes, but um, we will, we will uh, explore and see. Why do bedrooms need to access the backyard? They don't need to access the backyard, but I do have a lot of clients that um, from the main bedroom appreciate access to either um, a balcony or uh, a patio or, or some kind of outdoor space. Um, so, you know, first thing in the morning, they can go step outside and, and have a coffee or just read a book or at the end of the night, uh, the same thing. Separated bedrooms, whether occupied or used as office, prefer separate. Yeah, so that's that's another um, thing too. I, I get that a lot with um, families that have young children. They kind of want, well, not super young, but you know, five, six, seven years old. Uh, they want the as much privacy as they can have. So in a scenario like this, um, so the rooms are going to be like 11 feet wide for a bedroom. It's not not like great, but if we did like 11 by 13, so if we call that a bedroom, that a bedroom, um, you know, let's put a bathroom, washroom, half bath, water room, whatever we're calling it. Um, let's go up here. Let's maybe do, you know, a bedroom. Let's say. So there's tons of room there. The trick that we run into with this is how do we access these bedrooms now? You're just, I don't want to have like a thousand doors that are facing the, the kitchen, um, dining room and living room. So, so what if we did this? What if this was, what if this was a bedroom? What if we put something telling me to put the kitchen at the back, but I know, I know somebody is going to kill me for putting it too far from the, um, uh, garage. So bed, bed, bed. We may have to change the proportions of this L cause it's kind of quirky, but let's, uh, let's not give up on it just yet. So there's two feet. There's a four foot and uh, I don't know, say a three foot island like that. Yeah. It's a pretty tight kitchen. Pretty tight kitchen. I'm going to have to change the scale of my L here. But it is an option. So we could have, you know, um, table here, kitchen at the back, maybe do an L shaped kitchen, floating island here so that we've got maybe an access point here, an access point here nice windows so when you're sitting at the dining area um you have a nice view outside but there's not shoes and you know floor mats and stuff gathering at the back door we can push those off to each side and then for the family room we might want to now this is going to be a modest house here guys so this isn't uh this isn't one of the the big guys they usually run into so we could have like a little tv set up here you know rug chair here chair here all with the ability to view the tv and um you know entry door somewhere here i uh, just saw a comment how do you access the back bedroom so this is what i'm getting to if we did something like this so if we traded the bathroom and the bedroom so this wall doesn't exist here this is bathroom what we can do sometimes is create a small hallway here so we have a door here a door here and a door there into that bedroom so it kind of creates a little bit of a nook just want to be mindful what that view is into that bathroom sometimes but it seems that in this scenario we would have like a little uh you know nothing really happening here and that's kind of tucked in so that might work um do i have a podcast oh no i really want one i've been on a podcast i was just asked yesterday to be on another podcast um and um I do, I do love talking <laughs> and talking architecture and talking design. So, um, yes, I would, I know I don't have a podcast. Yes. I would love a podcast. Thank you for asking though. Are you saying I should or shouldn't have one before I get too excited here? <laughs> so yeah, this would be, I need a highlighter here guys or some color so you guys can see a little bit better. Give me one. Here we go. One second. So we've got so we always apply color on the back of our tracing paper uh that way uh it'll show up beautifully on the other side 
but it also doesn't smudge the marker. You guys get it. You guys, I'm not talking to, to children here. You guys are the smartest group I've seen all day. So yeah, so if the bedrooms shape up something like that, the kitchen seems awkward in the back. It's, you mean the layout of the kitchen or the position of the kitchen being that far back? Oh, so you did go to the office this holiday weekend, huh? No, no, I'm at home right now. I did not go to the, I actually, I went to pick up the stand that my phone is on right now. So I stopped by for two seconds and then um, uh, I brought it home. Boy, there's some accountability on here too. Jeez, do I use uh, Revit? Uh, it's R-E-V-I-T is the software. So R-E-V-I-T. Yes, I absolutely uh, use it every day. And uh, it's my go-to software of choice, the position, the position of the kitchen. Okay, fair enough. So um, that is, uh, that's fair. That's fair. So if we have two bedrooms back there, but let's see, because this, this whole space is going to be wide open and available uh, for us to, uh, to juggle around. So um, then, then the next thing would be, we kind of have the main bedroom at the front of the house, which I don't love. In hindsight, I should probably flip all these and get the main bedroom to the back of the house. Do you guys, you guys agree? If you're the, you're the homeowner, we definitely, you paid for the house. Do you want your bedroom at the front or the back? Is there a way to download Revit for free without being a student? Uh, Revit gives like a very fast trial. I think it's seven days or something like that. And then, um, no, you're, um, there is no other way. It's all, it's all web-based now. So you can't even get like a, uh, like one, when I was a student, you can get a hack copy of software and, and whatever, you know, enter in a serial number and it was yours, but now it's all web-based. So every time you open the program, it downloads a license from Autodesk's website and stuff. So it's, it's really tracked. If there is a way to do it, I'm not sophisticated enough, but uh, uh, I don't know what options they have out there for students to learn it. So um, yeah, not sure how else to answer that. Master bedroom far away from the noise for sure. What do we consider the noise? Like the garage main entry? Or is it the kitchen, dining area, living room? Um, and this is where it gets really specific, uh, guys, with, with how people use their home. You know, if a couple lives alone, um, there is no noise source, really. They, <clears throat> they are the noise. But, you know, if they have, like, teenage kids that are staying up later than they are, then, yeah, that, that would be um, definitely something they would want a little more peace and quiet as they're going to bed for the night. So let's revisit this. And if we've got, if we can do the master bedroom, the main bedroom down that side, we can thin this out here. Okay, this could, this could work too, because then I could put a door here. Um, and then we could have this space for, well, this whole space here for walk-in closet and ensuite. And then we could put another bedroom here I'd ideally try to back, get the bedrooms back to back, but I think in this scenario, it's going to be something like this. Um, so we'll have a bathroom here, a bedroom, and a bedroom there. Okay, so now we're shaping up a little bit here. Full disclosure, guys, I do not think these through <laughs> whatsoever before I click that that live button. So we're 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 struggling together in real time here. That's kind of fun. <clears throat> Would you consider? The garage in the corner of the L, master to the left, and public spaces up to. Yeah, I mean, we could, the way the proportions of this plan are, this this garage could easily slide over. This could be, um, I'm not sure if this would be enough for kitchen, dining room, living room. I mean, we can manipulate the letter L to do whatever we want it to do. But yeah, that, that would definitely be an option uh, there. And then we could end up with something kind of similar to what we're working on now um in a sense so let's let's keep going like this so if we had a door there a door there a door there you know have our counter our toilet you know our tub and maybe a little closet behind the door there that might kind of work i might want to close off this opening a little bit more so that um you know anything going on in the, the living room is not you know I like, I like acoustical privacy from a bathroom. Does that make sense? Is there another way I should be saying that? Or does everybody kind of get what I'm saying when I say acoustical privacy from a bathroom? I even like visual privacy. 
What about the mechanical room? Oh, you want heating and cooling too. Jeez, high end, high end. Um, what we're going to end up doing on this one is uh, I generally default to a, a basement a mechanical room. So um, within this long remaining space or within this space, actually, we will end up doing a staircase. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? No, we're going to make this the mud room up here. Double doors here somewhere, shelving maybe shelving there or a window. And then this, I bet you, where's my scale here? Also, does it have to be a one-story house? Absolutely not. No, it doesn't have to be a one-story house. I have, I've done a couple of two-story houses uh, on these. So the letter P uh, was a two-story house. Did anybody, um, has anybody seen the one that I did for the letter P? That was a really fun one. Um, because it, and I, I'm not in my office right now. I usually, they're all taped up to my wall there so I could show you around, but the, the one for the letter P, the Indiana Pacers basketball team had uh, commented on one of my posts asking for a, a P house and I gave them one. Now it was, oh, that was a cool one. Thank you. Yeah. So it was, um, it was a big two story house and inside like you know, uh, can you see that here? You know, there's, it was their letter P, their logo, but I made it so big that we fit a half basketball court in there. So it was just massive. Thank you, Dory. I can't wait to see your finished layout off to bed from Ireland. Ireland, good night. Oh my God. I want to visit Ireland so bad. Um, stop by, follow along. I'm going to be broadcast announcing my lives soon. So um, you can jump back in and say hello and uh, respect to Ireland. Thank you for stopping by. I really, really appreciate that. Regarding heating and cooling, could suggest passive house. Yeah, could suggest passive house. Could suggest uh, uh, there's you know a few systems that don't require a dedicated mechanical room. Um, you know, they I generally want a mechanical room. Uh, they all need some kind of space, but some need more than than the others. So um, out of the three D, out of the letters you've done, which would you three D model? Oh, you okay? So you got to go back a few posts that I made because I did show. Uh, I have some of them done in Revit uh, and I show them in 3D. So it's kind of an aerial view of uh, maybe four or five letters. I forget. Actually, you know what? I have a computer in front of me. Let me, I just don't have a keyboard in front of me. If you guys want to see some of the 3D ones I've done, let me know and I'll, I'll get my keyboard over here and, and, and make it all happen and show you guys. Um, so if this is what's happening here, where were we? I'm jumping around a lot. It's what I do best. So... If that's three feet and that's three feet and that might be three feet, what we can probably do is a U-shaped set of stairs, something like this, you know, so we could, I want to do this, start here, come down the stairs, down and down to there. So we'd have a railing across there and there. Okay, so we've got a staircase. Now um, we have a main entry door. Um, I would probably do in this scenario some uh, closets here or you know maybe a closet and a bench something like that but let's do let's do a double set of closets one could be for coats and one could be for just general house storage but something like that and what else let's see some comments here would love to see was thinking of taking yours and modeling it guys i'm uh I've been getting a lot of comments too from the Sims community about uh, my Alphabet 4 plans and how a lot of people who um, work on the Sims want to uh, take those floor plans and model them in 3D. So I had the thought of like, what if I made them available for you know, purchase for just a tiny little fee for um, you know, basic floor plans with some dimensions that people could take and, and build on their own. Um, you know, it's, it's some effort to get it going from my end. Um, but uh, it'd be something that I would I would consider doing. I'm opening up Revit right now, guys. So uh, just be patient with me because it's a monster program and it takes a while to open. Uh, hi, I need bathroom help in new home styles, Cape Cod. Um, need help, need bathroom in new home. You need to renovate a bathroom or you need to fit a bathroom, another bathroom somewhere in the existing home. Two very different uh, requests, both likely doable, not for Sims would do it in Revit and render. Okay. Uh, we bathroom and second floor. So boy, I'd have to see, have to see the existing floor plan already. Uh, we do offer consultations through our office, um, 
for uh, floor plan second opinion reviews. So if no single bathroom on first. So if it's something that you wanted some professional help with, where we wanted to get on a Zoom call and kind of, uh, if you've got floor plans for the house, uh, by all means, you could reach out to our office and schedule one um, there and we could we could spend an hour kind of brainstorming um, some ideas there. So guys, it's shaping up here a little bit. How much would that be? That is 250 Canadian dollars for an hour. And you would send me your floor plans ahead of time and we could uh, review them, kind of get some ideas. Then we would jump on a call and share all those ideas with you. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's a small investment for big results, in my opinion. Um, so let's, let's get some color on here. Let's, let's color up our bedrooms. And if I had a blue uh, highlighter somewhere, I would give our bathrooms another color here so that we can... Um, you know, really distinguish what's what. So there's a bedroom, there's a bedroom, and there's a bedroom. Okay, so the bedrooms are pretty spaced out. Yeah, but I'm in USA, New Jersey. So that last one I did was in Texas for a nice, wonderful couple from Texas. So, oh, you're Canadian. I, I'm absolutely Canadian. I'm, I'm very Canadian. Yes. Born and raised. Um, does that make me amazing by automatic default? Nah, but thank you. It's good to be Canadian. Um, so now uh, this is another important thing and helpful thing is when you start highlighting rooms and applying color to a plan, you, you know, other things start to emerge, right? So we get to see, okay, so all of the bedrooms have privacy from one another, right? So now we're, we're starting to see that no bedrooms share a wall. So each one is going to receive their own unique bit of privacy there. Um, and then we've got the main entry here. That might be bigger than I want it to be, but let's say that's the edge of the living room. That might be okay because this is a, an entry exit point. Um, so we need a little extra space there. No, I mean, I'm Canadian too. It's so nice to other Canadian accounts here. Yeah, absolutely. Where are you from? I'm, uh, I'm just down here. Uh, just outside of Windsor, Ontario. Uh, just going to jump into some comments here, guys, real quick, so I don't miss anybody. What got you into architecture? Oh, I have the most concise story on what got me into architecture. So my dad was in construction, and he had me. And my dad, although he was like a foreman, sort of job site supervisor, would come home at night and draw on a drafting table. Um, and I just remember watching my dad draw and thinking to myself, oh my God, I want to do that so bad. Like I can't believe people, because I absolutely love to draw as well, but I didn't have a purpose to the drawing. And then I realized people could get paid to, to draw buildings and design. And I'm, this is like five years old, right? So, oh, you draw buildings. Um, so that was it. Yeah, I never, my plan B was graphic design, but uh, plan A, I never gave up on plan A. It was always plan A. Uh, I was just born to be an architect, I suppose. Joey, welcome. You are always on top of these lives. I appreciate you coming by always, always. Oh, and speaking of being Canadian, I mean, I mean, it's super cliche, but I am having um, some Tim Hortons right now. I'm in Vancouver on the other side of the country. Yeah, it's a little bit earlier for you guys. Lucky, but awesome. Hey, from BC, what's up? Tammy, sorry. How are you, Tammy? Thanks for stopping by. Hey, Finn, what's going on? Ottawa, I love Ottawa. Oh my God, I uh, I always used to joke. I said if anybody ever kicked me out of Can uh, out of Windsor, I'd, I'd move to Ottawa. But now I, I've changed that to Paris, France. But that's just me. <laughs> Getting my master's in architecture. Any advice? Tons of advice. I have tons. Oh, uh, Joey, you're the best. Thank you. Best lives on TikTok. I'm not, I don't even show my face. Maybe maybe that's what makes them the best. Uh, but that's awesome. Oh, hey Hamilton, what's going on? I was just talking about going to Hamilton recently. Um, there might be a concert up there that I want to go check out. Um, so getting my master's in architecture, any advice? Uh, uh, oh. Yeah, tons, but I, I, I got to focus it for you here a little bit. What do you have any specific questions? Is it about work? Is it about the master's itself? Is it about your future? And to the, um, to the commenter who is talking about being from New Jersey and wanting a consultation, yeah, we, so we can still do those. It's 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 no problem. If it's just a floor plan sort of consultation like this and, and working out where we can fit additional rooms and stuff, could definitely do that. If you need an actual 
um, architect in the New Jersey area to to complete a project or to do a project, I have a, a wonderful colleague, a TikTok colleague, who could probably help you out, no problem. Is it illegal to own a moose? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't have every Canadian law memorized, believe it or not. So I'm not sure if it's illegal to own a moose, but uh, I don't even know if I've ever seen a moose in person, to be honest, guys. Don't, don't watch the misconceptions about Canada. <laughs> it's not, not everything you see in the movies. You've lived in Windsor for 12 years. Oh, awesome. Welcome to Windsor. I've been here uh, more or less my whole life. Uh, how to get a job. So is it Lily? Lily. Okay. How to get a job. Um, it really helps to know people. And I don't mean like, uh, um, no, like the right guy to make a phone call, but just increasing your network of connections. So somebody always knows somebody, right? So I always find like some of my best opportunities have come from just letting people know that I was available and other friends, maybe you did your undergrad with, or friends you went to high school with, letting them know that you're that you're looking for a job um, helps because you you can never be sure who's talking to who and why the other thing i would recommend doing is um uh making sure your skills are on point um so don't don't claim to know revit if you only know how to open revit and like you know draw a wall um, be honest about your skills and definitely in your resume um there's a few, and cover letter um uh, oh, apply to OAA competitions to get exposure. That's what I did. Oh, cool pointer. Cool. Yeah, that's that's definitely an option. But that's that's a whole pile of work too, from what I understand. Um, networking is important, but um, on resumes and cover letters um, and portfolios, try to come across as somebody who, who can help the company that you're applying for. In my practice, I receive resumes where uh, young graduates, new graduates, students are always saying they're, they give me a long list of how they want me to help them. And you got to remember that I'm, I'm, I'll be paying you. This would be a job, right? So I need, you know, there's always training involved. We get that, but you also need to remember that you have to be, you have to be able to make contributions to the company. So if you could be specific in how you could help the company, that would go a long way. Um, how I would try to identify with some with some of the projects that the company has done in the past. So definitely go to their website or Instagram or wh wherever they're showing their work and um, be, oh, say, yeah, that, that building you did on the corner of, you know, X and Y looks great. Uh, Monroe Kruger, there's a comment here saying research the company before applying. Absolutely. That kind of goes hand in hand with what I'm saying here is, is know where you're applying, uh, know who you're applying to. Uh, who you're applying to try to get a name um, like if it's if it's me we're a small firm you could address it to me that's easy right but if it's a big firm make a call see who like the whole like dear sir madam kind of backs or whatever pronouns are, are being used on, on I haven't written a cover letter or resume in a while um, yeah just try to be mindful of, of where it's going it just shows that you took like five seconds to do some work you know um, so yeah those are that's my two cents worth on, on getting out there, but just, just try to meet as many people as you possibly can. And I would, uh, th now this is a very personal statement, but I would rather, because we're a small firm in a small office, I would rather hire somebody with a good personality who is willing to learn than a complete jerk who thought they knew everything. Um, even, even though they might know a lot, uh, I just can't be around people who, who are egotistical and think that they're, they're better than everyone else. I brought Revit to my firm and they taught me how to render out I tried bringing Revit to a, my a firm before, and uh, it it was a tough sell. Uh, I think the price tag scares a lot of employers that that aren't in it. But oh, Lily, you're very welcome. Um, and if you don't follow along, um, follow. We do we do a ton of like go back through some of my videos because I do have a lot of architectural advice posts. Uh, a lot of I have a whole playlist dedicated to Revit tips, dedicated to these alphabet houses. But the architecture community on TikTok is really—it's a special group of people. It's not huge, but everybody—we've never met in person, any of us, but we all interact and we all help each other out, um, you know, through DMs and uh, you know, support like that. So it, it's a really good um, group to be around. That's good advice. I wish I asked a week ago. What happened a week ago? What did we do? Oh no, not a week ago. That sounds that sounds like something happened. 
Now half the office knows Revit and it's been growing and now almost all the new projects are with Revit. Yeah, it's a really uncomfortable period when you're um, transitioning from what I'm, I'm guessing is AutoCAD to Revit. Um, I hired a guy recently who's, who's absolutely awesome um, and he's learning Revit and, from having used CAD for a long time and um, it, 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 it just operates different. It's a different animal altogether and it's, um, you know, it's worth it in the end, but you know, there's some effort. Guys, I think I'm going to do a little L shaped kitchen like this. Just such a nice opportunity to have extra space there. And then I don't know how much of an Island we can get in here. Probably not the end of the world if we do this, because we could still have big, um, doors or something like that running through the back there. Long story short, got my first job rejection. You live, you learn. Oh, yeah. Well, listen, that's, um, I'm a, I'm a big uh, advocate of um, things happening for a reason. Super cliche. I know, I know, super cliche, but um, it's, uh, it might be somebody's way of telling you that there's a better job right around the corner for you. So um, yeah, don't, don't be discouraged at all whatsoever. And, uh, um, you know, there's just keep looking. You're going to get rejection. Rejection's good. It builds, builds stamina, makes you dust yourself off and get back going again. Uh, do I do commercial mixed use? I do. I do. I don't do a ton of it. Uh, we're doing some mixed use, uh, one really cool mixed use project right now. Um, that's, um, commercial residential. It's a three story building in Windsor and, um, yeah, it's coming along. Cool. Uh, I think there's a lot of dead space by that entrance. Oh, I agree. There is a ton of dead space. Well, not dead space. I don't believe uh, dead space, but it's it's in this direction. I'm sure you're talking. It's pretty deep. What I would probably do if we had um, a little more time is I'd probably recess the front door, to be honest, um, and get the stairs down from here, down into the basement that way, and put the front door here. So then... Let me get some color here so that you guys can see this a little bit better. I'm trying to find a nice dark prisma color. Oh, wait, I brought this one up. Never mind. Here we go. So this would be our, could be our front porch, this that gray area there. So it would be recessed into the house. And we could still have some columns come out so that we can have, you know, a nice pronounced entrance, as some people like. I got denied 12 times, five years later, six of them have since offered. You got this. Yes, yes, yes. So it's, it's timing too, right guys? Like it's timing on the firm's part as well. They might not be ready to um, hire or hire you or hire. It, it might not be you. It just might be that position. You know, if they're looking for a more junior staff member, you know, somebody with one to three years experience, um, they, and you've got 15 years experience, they don't, uh, that's not what they're looking for. You might be awesome, but that's not the description that they're, of the employee that they're looking for. Uh, any suggestions on daily exercises to improve your design architecture skills? <laughs> you know, it's so funny. That, that is exactly why I do this. Um, I've done um, uh, a lot, uh, I'm probably about halfway through the alphabet already, but I love to design myself into difficult situations and then try to get out of them. So uh, the fact that I can pick a random letter of the alphabet, which is just a random shape and try to make things work within it, just kind of gets the thinking going outside, outside of boxes. You know, when, when we're studying architecture for anyone on here that is, um, has been trained in architecture, you know, they, they get you talking bubble diagrams. Okay, here's the entrance you know, and then here's the great room and here's the garage and here's this and here's that. And then it turns into like square spaces and, you know, this connects to that and that, you know, connects to that. I try to uh, practice um, spatial sort of gymnastics and just giving myself a weird puzzle and trying to solve it with space. So that's, that's one thing that I do. I also sketch a lot, um, whatever I see sometimes. Um, and um, that's, that's just a kind of a way to understand perspectives and textures and, and color and, and whatnot. Although I don't do a lot of color, it's just black and white sketching. And, um, yeah, so those, those are a couple things that I do. And also like to even add to the fun of it is make it, 
give yourself um, what we would call a program, an architectural program. So, you know, if it's a house, let's say there's three bedrooms, two bathrooms, a two car garage, you know, and then um, to make it even more fun, I would, I would make one more uh, claim to it. So I would say, so, okay, all of those things, right? There's a lot of people that can live in a three bedroom, two bathroom house, but then what if it's for a chef or what if it's for a painter? you know, an artist, or what if it's for someone who plays the piano? And then now you have to create or implement special pieces into that design to accommodate them. So if somebody's got a grand piano, well, that that requires its whole room, right? Uh, if somebody is a drummer or somebody loves to do sculpture, right? So you're working in these unique spaces to um, any given scenario. All right, let me grab some comments here. When building with concrete block is there anything specific specifically tricky from an architectural view um not necessarily um there is uh I, the only thing the the first thing i try to keep in mind when designing with concrete block is is modularity so designing to the best of my ability not to have to cut any blocks so um, blocks as you may or may not know are uh, generally we call them eight inches tall. Uh, they're actually seven and five eighths, but everybody rounds it to eight. They're 16 inches long, technically 15 and five eighths. Um, and then the width varies. Okay. But in this 16 inch length, you want to keep it to eight inch increments. So if you're doing a floor plan, you know, with block walls, you want to make sure that they don't have to cut those blocks. So to the best of your ability, Obviously, blocks are easy enough to cut, but it um, it's easier if they don't have to. And then they at doorways, you know, making sure the door that you're specifying works within a standard opening of block walls. Um, and there's this really cool tip that I learned um, about working with concrete block. And if anybody, if you're asking, that means I'm going to share it with you because it's uh, it saves me. It has saved me so much time in my life. So. Let's, uh, here, let me put this aside for a sec. We are sidebarring into concrete block um, uh, things. So I was taught by a mason when I was young that if you had, let's say, seven feet, four inches, uh, eight feet, zero inches, or let's say six feet, eight inches. Okay, these are all divisible by eight inches. And the reason I know that is... Let me get some color here. This might help highlight it. If the feet of it is an odd number, this will be four inches. That will make it modular. If the feet number is even, then zero or eight will make it modular. So I know if somebody shows me a wall that's like 117 feet, four inches, that's modular. I know that works. Uh, if somebody says uh, 82 feet, eight inches, that's modular because this is even, that is eight or zero inches. Um, if somebody says 72 feet, five inches, not modular. I don't even have to check. I just know because of that quick rule that somebody taught me. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't know. Is that, is that helpful at all? Because I, I use that all the time. Oh, I'm going to get to some comments here too, guys. So bear with me for a second while I sniffle my way through the afternoon. In the USA, the interior wall of the garage has to be two hours. What about Canada? No, we're not. We're 45 minutes between the garage and the house. Uh, does the master bedroom... Two hours? That's a lot. Um, does the master bedroom have a bathroom and walk-in closet? Yes. Uh, okay, so back to that. Everybody cool on the masonry thing? It's a really fun... Maybe I'll do a video on that after. That's a really good tip um, that I use all the time. Um, the next couple letters you should make the letter first letter occupation of that person. Cool. Oh, cool. Thanks so much. You're welcome. That is a cool idea. Yeah. Thanks guys. Uh, or I'm missing a comment here. Uh, what would, would you do numbers after letters? Yes. I want to do numbers. I want to do corporate logos. I want to do Zodiac signs. I want to do, um, like the top part of a keyboard. So any of the like cash tag, dollar sign, percent, ampersand, asterisk, um, I want to do all those anything anything that gives me a cool cool little challenge um but uh yeah i've done i did the indiana pacers logo and i did the tiktok logo in a video as well 
And if you guys are content, uh, content creators as well, you just really think sometimes you're going to have like a, a video blow up. And I thought the TikTok floor plan would have done much better. And it did not. It did not at all. I'm enjoying the live. Thank you. I'm enjoying you being here. This is, uh, this is a lot of fun. So, hey, bud, how are you today? Remember me? I'm from Cornerbrook. Yes, Cornerbrook, my friend. How are you? You were in, oh, was it drywall, plaster? You were something. Yes, but I definitely remember chatting about uh, the beautiful people of Newfoundland. Thanks again for coming by. That's awesome. So what, you're just after six o'clock in Cornerbrook, would you be? Yes, all right. So let me see, guys. My desk is an absolute disaster here. But I'm looking for, what color is this? Yeah, that might have to do. Old kid stuff laying around the house. <laughs> 608, yeah, you're exactly an hour and a half. Um, so let's color this space in here. Look at us, to the blue and yellow. Is the guy who suggested Sunbeam Road still on this live? Because I had made a joke that we were going to get into blue and yellow spaces to celebrate. I built a back porch on my house this weekend. <laughs> that's, that's a good weekend. I, I don't know uh, what I have to show as an accomplishment this weekend. So good for you, you're winning. You're definitely winning. Um, so here's a house, guys. I don't know. I think we're kind of like at a place where we can call it something, you know? So we've got, let, let's walk through it again. So we've got a garage, a two-car garage. Two, And we did talk early. I don't know. Uh, it's hard to keep track of who's new and who's been here. Um, but uh, to have the ability to pull your cars or at least open the garage door so you can have access to the backyard like that. Um, is there we would from the garage enter the mud room here from the mud room we would enter into a common entryway that's common with the front door that we would access this way so this space is kind of dedicated to uh sort of personal entrance from people who live in the home public entrance for people visiting the home we've got a closet we've got circulation space and then we would have the stairs that would go down to the basement from here so we could work that out and those stairs would have to go that way now if we do end up bumping this front porch in as we sketched out earlier um have you ever considered to be a professor that's one of my dreams i so i used to teach actually i i, I absolutely love teaching i love sharing uh architecture with people i love uh expanding people's minds when it comes to um ideas and concepts and things that that they're capable of so yes i've i I would, I could see that being a late life career move is to, to get into, to education, academia somehow, and, uh, uh, just do that to stay, to stay involved. And, uh, yeah, so those are my thoughts. So garage there, my room. Okay. And then from here, we've got, um, a small hallway that is dedicated to two bedrooms and a bathroom. And then we have the, so here, let's go entry, living room, dining room, kitchen. So that's going to be all open concept there. Cool. And then another uh, little hallway-ish thing happening here, but that's just one door to lead there. Laundry is going to be in the basement. Mechanical is going to be in the basement. The other thing that I'm, I'm always kind of on the fence on, let me know what you guys think is, a bathroom for guests so here we have we have a bathroom uh, that's kind of adjacent to the two other bedrooms uh, that company could use when they come over you know it's not like uh, you know an ensuite where they have to go through the master bedroom main bedroom and into the ensuite that way it's it's open but do you how important is it to have a separate powder room or a half bath to have for um, guests coming over to your house it's smaller it's quicker to clean when they're coming over um and it's uh yeah you don't have to show them your kids embarrassing mess maybe hmm. so let me know your thoughts on two-piece baths or half baths for visitors i'm officially losing track of all my things here very important yeah okay cool here, I'm losing track of some comments here. Have you ever considered? Yeah, what about a raised ceiling above the entryway? Clear story windows. Thousand percent, yeah. Um, I would definitely do um, 
taller ceilings in the entry, you could even take them all the way down that side of the house. The, the cross section of that would be pretty easy to to establish. You know, if we had a bedroom here, and then maybe let's say we're cutting a section through here. If we had a bedroom there, and the living room could be taller here. You know, we could do like a cool shed roof on it or something like that, which would get us some additional ceiling height there. Does that make sense, guys? So, you know, this would be a load-bearing wall, likely. That ceiling would be there, and then we would have, you know, whoever's standing here would have nice views outside. Very important. Yeah, I think they're very important, too. Um, I mean, it's not always in the budget, but um, if it is... You know, I'd like to like to factor that in because keep in mind bathroom square footage is is a little more expensive um, because you know there's toilets and cabinets and sinks um, you know the, it's more expensive square footage but then you need the square footage for it so that it increases the size of the house overall. Um, let's more heat and light into living. Yeah, it depends on the orientation. So if this is um, north, right, you're not going to get as much. It'll be a nice diffused light, but if this is south, yeah, you're going to get cooked in the summer. Uh, well, in the winter time, you want that heat coming in, and in the summertime, when the sun is higher in the sky, you would try to control that overhang so it, that sunlight didn't enter into that space. So back here, let's color up our garage a little bit and get some um, contrast going on there. Make the mudroom smaller. Can this half bath go? Yeah, I, I think, again, guys, we're, we're brainstorming here and kind of spitting ideas out real fast. But I think I would try to make that work in this core as well with the mudroom and stairs. And considering this garage is like, uh, I think it's about 24 feet deep we started with. So I'm sure I could squeeze it in there. And what I love about half baths or powder rooms too, is that nobody really cares about the layout. As long as there's a toilet and a small sink in there, then everybody is going to be just fine. and just, just plenty happy with that. So let me, I'm going to color these rooms in cross section yellow because they are yellow in our floor plan. So they help relate to that there. And then if you guys don't know, and elevations or cross sections, the baseline is always the thickest line on the drawing, kind of represents the earth or grade, ground. Um, do you use AutoCAD as well for these types of drawings as an architect? Oh, yeah, yeah, a thousand percent. I I, uh, I don't draft by hand anymore. anymore. I never did. Uh, I'm not of that age bracket that had to do that. We did do it a little bit in school. Um, so no, these are just, this is just my process for developing ideas. And then from here, uh, we don't use AutoCAD. We use uh, Revit, R-E-V-I-T. And that is all uh, 3D drafting. You kind of build your project in 3D, you model in 3D, and then you um, extract two-dimensional drawings from it. So uh, Josh, yes, I do use BIM. I use Revit. Um, and uh, BIM, who, for those of you who don't know, who might be asking, stands for Building Information Modeling. So um, here, guys, I totally forgot. I was, somebody asked forever ago about pulling up the uh, 3D floor plans um, to show you guys. And I, I have them. They're opening up right now. This is the problem. This is the problem I have when I try to answer 5,000 questions at once um, for people. So give me one second here, guys. Um, Pulling all this stuff up. So, there are my 3D floor plans, some of them. So sometimes I would pre-draw pre them just so I had something easier to trace um, to make my videos because it's uh, uh, just easier that way. A was kind of the cooler, one of the cooler ones that I liked the most. Um, you know, it was a little two bedroom, one car garage, a uh, little courtyard in the middle. I should shut these shadows off. I think they're, oh, uh, geez, I have it on my templates. One second, guys. Sorry. Sorry, 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 sorry. Shadows. Don't cast shadows. Done, done. Okay, so there's my A. Uh, there, a little covered patio at the back. Uh, R was kind of fun. Q was super weird. Um, but yeah, so some of them I've begun in 3D, um, but these are by no means ready to ready to render out or anything like that. They're just um, 
you know, something that I use so that when I would go to like the floor plan, oh, there's my pacer one. There's the outline for the, the one. So you can see that half basketball court in the middle, how big that made the house. Um, yeah, so I just use these as kind of like silhouettes so that I had something to trace when I was uh, working them out. So back to this goodness right here. Did I miss any questions? Use BIM. Would the basement under the house be under the house, but not under the garage? Like, Joey, yeah, like 9,999 times out of 10,000 times, that would be the case. Uh, it's very possible to put a basement under a garage. And I've priced it out with some clients um, who want like a really loud theater room or, or something like that. Uh, but the cost of uh, of it um, in the two times that I've worked on it have just not been in line with what the, the client wanted to spend. So very cool. I'm school at the moment. I did AutoCAD. Revit comes later on for me. Oh, so they start you in CAD and uh, move you to Revit. Yeah, you'll realize once you get to Revit that CAD is like almost a waste of time. Um, but I don't know. What, what school are you going to? Maybe I, uh, um, maybe I know somebody there. Hmm. And I'm only saying that because your name is Prime Canadian. So maybe you're, <laughs> you're local enough. Can you add a swimming pool? Sure can. Indoor or outdoor? No, I'm just kidding. This would be an outdoor swimming pool. Um, yeah, I can do it, but I foolishly drew this cross section in there somewhere. So one more uh, question. Oh, Ottawa U. Nice. Again, love Ottawa. I don't know if you were here earlier. Somebody else was from Ottawa. Or was that you? Like I said, it's hard to draw, read comments, and read usernames all at the same time. <laughs> Um, but you know, we're doing it. Let me ask you guys this then. Jacob, what is up, my friend? Thank you for stopping by. You're, uh, you're late, but here we are. So what do you guys think of covered spaces from the house now? So now if we've got a kitchen, we've got a dining area, we've got a living room, probably want some kind of covered patio from one, two, or all three of these rooms, um, as they access the backyard. Do you guys have an opinion on that? I would absolutely love to hear it. I plastered a house last winter. He has a basement under a two pay garage. I'd reinforced it. Yeah, I, I and um, so perfect. We have somebody on our live here that, that's done it recently. Um, it was pr uh, probably gonna guess it was precast slabs that, um, that they used as the floor for the garage or the ceiling for that basement. Um, but uh, yeah, it's it's very cool. It's it's just an expense though. And again, depending, I don't design projects for like um, people who have like like all of this in the world. I don't. Nope. I I I design for um, everybody. You know, anybody who needs good architecture and wants something cool to live in. Um, you know, of all income levels, I definitely uh, love working with everybody. Uh, with a warming planet, I think shade is increasingly important. Covered porch makes sense. Abs absolutely. Um, covered porch. And keep in mind, I'm doing this live on a rainy day. So covered porch is, uh, for days, like, it's beautiful outside, in my opinion. It's cool. It's a little bit breezy. But it's just hard to, to be out there without a covered space. So covered terrace or patio is practical. Yeah. So the question is, how how big does it get? Like, do you want all, like, something that runs the full length of the house like that? Um, or is this just like a quick thing off the kitchen or dining area and then have some, because some people like to sit in the sun also. So, you know, maybe we could have off the dining area, we could have it covered and maybe, you know, here we could have it open. Maybe here a patio extends across the back. So if a car had to pull through, maybe this is one big open entertaining space, outdoor space. Could be. Hmm. Engineer, one beam, 12 inches on center with an expansion joint around perimeter of slab. Yeah, it's it's a lot of work. A lot of work. Oh, somebody sent me a rose. Thank you. I'm still getting my bearings on what roses and diamonds and all those things mean. Um, I know I recently got a whole pile of diamonds in one live. And I, I was like, oh, that's sweet. That's sweet. And then I later looked into it and I'm like, oh, my God. That's a really, really generous gift. <laughs> so uh, thank you guys for sending um, sending gifts. And when I get a little deeper into the lives, I fully plan on understanding what they all mean, including, uh, and I'm not pronouncing this, I'm not even going to pronounce it, I'm just going to spell it, D-I-Y-Z-O-N-A is sending me a bunch of stuff. So thank you. I will absolutely, I am grateful, and I'll look back into it later and see what it all exactly means. Um, 
so yeah, guys, this is an L house. Now, is everybody, everybody still got some stamina? They want to keep going because I've got a little bit more time and somebody was, um, earlier challenging me to do a, a Y house. So the letter Y you guys want to go for it. You guys want to start over, do a, do a Y. All I need is one. Yes. Oh, Joey. Yeah. Doors at both sides of the garage. Absolutely. So there's our L house. And for all the Canadians on the, the stream, why not? I made that same joke. Yes. All right. We got our yes. And for all the Canadians on the stream, and even the Americans who might know, they usually start off by humming the theme song for Hockey Night in Canada. I have no idea why. <laughs> it's just kind of the first thing that jumps into my head. So... You'll have to be here like one of the first three viewers to uh, um, to hear that debacle because I don't, I have some musical talent, but singing is not one of them. So, Josh, let's do it. All right. All right. So now we are going to do a letter Y. So we're going to start with pencil here. Um, the other thing is, is a font too, right? So let's go back up to Revit here and let's see, let's get a uh, text and put the my caps lock on why yeah that's a why i suppose we can work with that right so i'm going to draw this one out in a second but we've got a stem down at the bottom essentially a v with a stem all right let's there we go so if we are i also need my scale oh guys if you can see how messy my desk is right now everybody would laugh at me but I don't care. It's part of my creative process. So it's what I do. So let's say that is 12, 24. Am I in this frame here? Yeah. Okay. So we've got that. And then that's going to come up to a certain point. And then oh, I may have started at the wrong part of the page here, guys. I may have to bump that down so it fits. there let's say something like that and it's maybe a 60 degree angle it's going up at and let me go so that's that that's that 24 is there Boy, that's not good. <laughs> Excuse me for one sec, guys. I got to get this thing symmetrical here. And then this line does not belong. But that's definitely too long. So we might have to come down with something like this. So guys, while I'm cleaning this up, let's talk parameters. What are we, what is this? Who is this house for? What, how many bedrooms? How big of a garage? How... How, how and what? One story house. Let's keep it one story because it's just easier to do on lives. Um, I think that Y's even got to shorten up a little bit more. All right, buddy. It's been another interesting evening, but I must get back to the porch. Right on, my friend. Thank you for stopping by. As always, take care of the rock for me until I get back there again. Lake house. Yeah, we could do a lake house. Absolutely. Actually, that inspires some some interesting views out the back. I could I could get into that. Three car, three bedroom. All right, all right. So let's let's start talking here. So we got a lake at the back. We want three bedrooms, three garage. Prime Canadian, thank you for the follow, my friend. Holiday house, lake house is good too. Well, let's do a lake house. They chimed in first. So something like that. Three bedroom, three car garage. So three bedroom. Let's do uh, two and a half baths and two. And yeah, let's let's start thinking about this, guys. So we've got the road at the bottom. Who wants to name the road today? Need a good name for the road. Last road that we had was Sundine Road. Two and a half baths. Yes, the question marks meaning what is a half bath? Is that the is that the question here? You got half a bathroom. So a half bathroom is just a toilet and a sink. Um, but we talked about this earlier. Um, you must be a newer newer viewer today because we did this whole song and dance about who calls it a bathroom, who calls it a 
washroom, who calls, who calls what, what. Um, and then there was a lot of talk about um, whether it's a half bath or a powder room or anything. Rody McRoad face. <laughs> Joey, I think you and I have the same sense of humor. Um, Pickle Road is a good one too. Rody McRoad face. That might have to work. It's just a lot of letters. All right. So let's, uh, let's get talking here. So in a case like this, yeah, we're going, I need one more before I decide. Rody McRoad face, Pickle Road or one more. Yale Street. That sounds expensive. I think Joey's going to win. I think it's Rody McRoad face. Rody McRoad face. Okay. Here it goes. Rody McRoad face. Rody McRoad face. <laughs> is it a road or is it like a boulevard or something like that? Just to, just to throw people off. Rody McRoad face boulevard. Yeah. That rolls off the tongue. Okay. So because I'm going to make sure all of this stays in the frame here. Our property would be something like that. Oh, you guys, jeez, I drew this Y pretty big. So the property would be like that. So this is a case where we might have enough room to pull in sideways into a garage, which could be kind of interesting. Or, or how do you guys feel about putting the garage back here? Like one of these, you know, like if we did something like that and did a long driveway up, could we do a garage off the back corner like that? Is that crazy? I don't know. But I do think, guys, before we go too far with this, I think I'm going to change the scale and just draw the Y a little bit smaller because I think we're going to run out of room real quick here. And then once I start scooting it around, it might not work as well as I want it to. Actually, you know what I can do? I should just print this Y that I had on my screen here and trace over it. Let's do that here. So let's, uh, yes, weird driveway. Totally weird driveway. But uh, we're not so weird as it would be just long. Um, so here's my Y. Let's go to file, print, uh, print preview. No, that didn't work. File, print, print. We want to print visible, visible portion and not that printer. We want this printer preview. No, you know what? We're going to draw it. I don't have the patience for this today. <laughs> Garage near road. No, the lake, right? The lake. You don't want to drive a car into the lake. Forgot about the lake. My own note right here. See, these are, these are the, the challenges and the problems when you design in front of other people. It'd be like doing your job in front of a, well, be, maybe this is what pro athletes feel like. You make one mistake and you know 20,000 people start yelling at you. Keep that in mind next time you yell at your favorite pro athlete. What Joey said. Yes, Joey knows. D-I-Y-Z-O-N-A, where are you from? Did you tell me that already? And Joey, you're, are you California? I want to remember that. Rotate the Y. So no, I won't. Arizona. Yes. Awesome. I won't rotate the Y. And I'll tell you why. Because I am keeping them part of the challenge that I've given myself. Joey, you're in Scotland? That's, is that cooler than California? Maybe. That's awesome. Thank you for being. So you're, are you 11 p.m.? What time is it in Scotland right now? That's really cool. Scotland, I had somebody from Ireland on earlier too. And uh, it's just so wild how the reach on this app is brings people together to talk design. 22, 10 p.m. All right. That is cool. Well, it's a, I appreciate you staying up late with us because it's, um, in North America here, I think it's all across North America. It's Labor Day weekend, so um, there is no work tomorrow. Oh, Manchester. Oh, cool. How are you? Is it Perry? I'm guessing that's your name. Thank you for stopping by. This is very, very cool. So Manchester, you, I think this will be a wise design. <laughs> oh, I love the puns. I love a good pun. Okay, so if we have a lake back here, and we have Rody McRoad face probably somewhere up here, then here's what I want to do. Okay, here's an approach. Tell me what you guys think. If we did a garage at the base of the Y, but uh, we're going to kind of do this. So let's say our driveway comes along this way. 
Okay, so we can enter the garage here, but the main entrance could be here. So we can, uh, visitors, we might have a U-shaped driveway, you know, something that they can drive right through almost in a U-shape, or we could have separate uh, parking for visitors. Um, you know, something like that, where visitors could pull in, back out and go, and then we could have a cool sort of walkway to a front door. Uh, that kind of keeps the vehicular access sort of a little more private on this side, but then visitors who are not coming over would experience this, what, what could be a very cool sort of angled view. Imagine, and on, oh, I'm not even going to claim to know what side of the road they drive on in Scotland, but in North America, we're driving on the right side of the road, which would give us a great view of that wall right there. Um, so, Oh, geez, I'm missing some comments here. Hold on, guys. Give me a second. We go. Wise design. Sure is. Hello from Ghana, West Africa. Bienvenue. Welcome. Thank you for being here. That's very cool. It's awesome. Is this a real project? It is not a real project. It is uh, part of the alphabet floor plan uh, series that we've been working on where we're taking letters of the alphabet and converting them to floor plans um, for the sake of nothing else is just practicing our space planning and uh, just having some good conversation and kind of designing um, designing in real time with my friends on the internet. All right, Liz Lux Home. Liz, how are you? Thank you for being here. Oh my God, you are like, uh, guys, if you don't know Liz, she's like absolutely destroying it on TikTok. She's got, I don't know, you got, I think you're a couple hundred thousand followers, maybe more at this point. And it's, it's really good, really, really good content. Go check her out if you are interested in interior design and um, all things awesome. This is the shape of my childhood home. Really? Well then, geez, tell me how are we doing this? But there is one thing is that there's a lake at the back. So here's, oh, you're welcome, Liz. Thank you. I, I'm, I'm, uh, I appreciate you. So our why here is going to start with a garage here. This, this makes a lot of sense. We want to keep the back of the house freed up. Um, I'm definitely seeing this angle of the Y as the main entry, like entering the house somewhere in this space here. So that kind of gives us a couple of options. I assume living room is at the junction. This junction? Because I'm thinking, I'm, I'm seeing it broken down like this. Like, could this be, well, A, could this be drawn better? I need some parallel lines here. So if that was living space, that might not be enough for bedrooms there, but we might be able to get a bedroom. You know, we could do a bedroom here as well. Now maybe we could see, this is the other puzzle too, is angles on letters aren't always, um, aren't always great. I printed an X the other day that I was going to work with and it didn't have the, it was like, uh, the lines didn't line up. It was like that and then like that or something. Like it was re really quirky. So got to be careful of which font we're using <laughs> to, uh, to drive these designs. So if we had something going like that, uh, here, I just want to, guys, I love the, con I absolutely love comments. So I just got to pause and read them from time to time. Can you not put carport instead of garage so you have drive in and out? Yeah, absolutely. We could do a carport. That's, that's easy and wouldn't take any more or less space. But if it was a carport, I would probably try to do a space here that has some double doors that would act as a shed or something like that. So you can store, you know, lawn equipment and, and whatnot. So what scale is this exercise done in? This one, the last one I did was 330 seconds. This one is going to be a little bit different. Um, actually, this one isn't quite to a scale right now. It's bad. I may have to invent one because I'm just scaling it <laughs> to fit on the screen so that you guys can see it. Um, Cause I only have so much range on my, uh, on my little boom stand here. Side entrance for ground. My garage was on the lower floor under the right wing of the Y. Oh, so you use a two story house. Gotcha. All right. So let's, so let's continue with this. So if we had our garage here, um, so family is kind of entering from this way. And if you're in Scotland, like my man, Joey, um, you would be pulling up through there, but if you're in North America, you're driving that way. So that, that's going to work in any climate in any geography. Um, I would 
I absolutely, does anybody else see the obvious like outdoor patio here? Something with these beautiful lake views kind of contained within that Y. That's, uh, I don't know, that kind of screamed out to me when I first started um, sketching away at this. And then what I think I would do is maybe if this is, well, the entrance can not going to be right at the corner. It will be just off the corner like that. So something like that. Maybe we can get a cool angle porch. Can you guys hear all these cars driving by that are super loud? I have my window cracked open a little bit. It's it's uh it's pretty annoying. Diamond patio. Could, could absolutely. Oh Joey, I need you to name the lake now. You gave me Roadie McRoadface. What's the name of the lake? And don't say Lakey McLakeface because that's you know, you you've played that card already. So this is turning out to be kind of interesting. So if we did this, we could have the garage. I like a little mud room here, but that could be, hmm, we could do something like this as our mud room. And then maybe here, this could be a bedroom or an office. Lake Y, Lake Y would work. Cool at the Y angle, that's a cool idea. Actually, no. Oh, you know what could be really cool? What if we had, what if we broke it into pieces? So if we established a diamond for the patio, we'll probably follow them. And then from that, we did a diamond shaped pool. So what if this was water? And then we had patio access from there, patio access from here, and then a large sitting area there. So. This could be a glass wall that you could see from uh, from inside the house. You'd have a pool right up against the walls. It's doable. I don't see it often, but it's doable. And then we could sit around it. So you could have you know steps into the pool here or something like that. That could be kind of a cool feature. What is a mud room? A mud room is uh, a, a sm small-ish room, generally located off the garage. You walk from the garage into your mud room, and it's just a room to. Uh, hang up your coats, um, take off your shoes, hang your bag up, and just kind of put your things down before you enter into the rest of the house. Um, great question. Yeah, um, I know you was it was it Ghana you were chiming in from? Uh, I don't know if they have an, uh, an equivalent or a different name for these spaces. What I'm learning about doing these lives is that we all we all have very similar rooms and we use them in similar ways, but a lot of times they're called very different things. So. Uh, always very curious to hear how things are done in other parts of the world um, and what they're called. And, and even within construction, there's different, um, you know, the way you do something is, uh, you know, they call it this in North Carolina and they call it something else in California. So it's pretty cool. Really think this should be a one story with walkout. That could work. That could work. And actually, you know, let me have my coffee. If it had a walkout, that would make sense because uh, we've decided this is going to be on a lake and generally land would um, uh, slope towards water. So that makes a lot of sense. Vestibule is a word for it too, though. So uh, vestibule I associate with a main entry, more of a commercial um, thing, is, you know, that has two sets of doors. So you open up a set of doors, you walk in, there's another set of doors, and then you pass through it. But so yeah, I guess it operates like a vestibule. Is that what you call them in Scotland, Joy? Lower floor garage and entertaining area. Yeah, okay, cool. So I should, I, I kind of design these for, for where I am because it's, it's what I know right now. But I guess as I learn what more, what other people are doing, what other people call them in their part of the world. So we're going to show that as dash lines. Somebody said carport. So I'm going to write carport slash garage there. And it could be one or the other. It's, it's, uh, it's going to work. Um, uh, however we decide to do it so that is our bedroom office and if that's the case i think we can have um a door to that bedroom slash office there if it's an office maybe double doors with some glass um, because i'm sure we'll have some windows off the porch here and then maybe this could be maybe this could be a little bathroom with some storage associated with it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave this wall there. I'm gonna erase this little bit. I'm gonna put the bathroom door in there only because I I, I really uh, have strong belief that people 
entering and exiting the bathroom should have some privacy. I mean, literally you walk out the door and people still can't see you, you know, and then, then you enter the room. Um, you know, I'm a, not a prude by any stretch, but I do like a little bit of modesty around, around bathroom design. So mostly vestibule is the most you can hope for. Rich people can afford mud rooms. Hmm. I'm going to have to come to Scotland one day and figure it all out for myself. Totally agree. All right, cool. So that's that. That's that. So we've got our entry here. There. I don't have an entry closet, though. So I want to fix that by maybe... How do I want to do this? You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to flip the mudroom around. I'm going to put the door here, door here. And then instead of having a window there, I'll put a closet here that has double doors there. And that will serve as a, like our guest closet. So when people walk in, they're kind of around the corner. So everything, if we ignore that part of the, the Y for a moment, um, that is dedicated to uh, car, car parking, let's call it, whatever uh, it is. Bedroom, office, entry closet, hallway, private bathroom. Okay, cool. Let me uh, grab some comments here. Should make full washroom because of the bedroom. Yeah, 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 that's a good idea. Um, and you know what, this bedroom's kind of big, so we could probably do that. So love that suggestion. Let's make that modification here. Um, and would you, are we talking access to the bathroom from the bedroom? Now that means that the guests are gonna be using this bathroom too though. So we could do, you know, a shower here and then maybe a doorway from the bedroom. So we'd have a door from the hall to the bedroom. I'm sorry, from the hall to the, yeah, hall to the bedroom, that's right. And then that, okay, so something like that could work. This this isn't pretty by any stretch, but at least it, we're putting it down on paper. Keeps the smell back a bit too. Yes, <laughs> yeah, that's pretty important too. I want to know what you think about John Lawton's Goldstein house. I don't know that house. I'm sorry, I might have to look it up. It's going to be hard to do right at this moment. Um, but if you ever do a video about it, tag me in it, and I would absolutely give you my comment and feedback on it. Very nice to see your creative process. Thank you. Yeah, this is another thing that... Uh, um, you know, I've had some people tell me, like, why, why do you do this? Like, why do you show people how you work? Um, you know, aren't you worried about, like, stealing ideas or anything like that? And I'm like, I don't know. I think I like, I think I like people to know how, how many decisions go into any little thing that we do. So even when it comes time to, like, um, yeah, okay, a bathroom. Is, is it, can we put it here? Can we put it there? Can we put the toilet this way? Do we need a window? Do we not need a window? Is it access off, accessed off the hallway or just the bedroom? Or is it this or is it that? So there's there's so many decisions you can make just off of one little thing. Um, so I, I kind of like showing people how much energy and decision-making goes into this. So thank you for the comment. That's what I realized, just thinking cut off top right corner of office. Oh, and there we go. <laughs> Have you ever done a wheelchair accessible house before? Um, not entirely. Um, well, I'm sorry. Yes. Yes. One. I did one. It was a very long time ago. And um, there is, I mean, if you think there's a lot going on in, uh, uh, let's call it a typical house design to design a home uh, for a, someone in a family who has a physical disability, uh, especially uh, uh, requiring a wheelchair, is the amount of effort that goes into it is it's uh, it's exhausting. There's so many things to consider and so much feedback you need from the client. Um, you know, even for example, the, the one that I did, and I'm talking, it was 20 years ago. It was a very long time ago, but it was for um, a child in the family. So it wasn't, uh, they didn't have the reach of an adult. So um, everything where you, you're used to setting things at certain heights are now lower because it's a child and closer because they don't have the reach to access uh, various things in addition to you know door widths and elevators and access ramps and access points so yeah it's it was a lot of a lot of work I've done a lot of commercial projects I used to do a ton of barrier free retrofit work in the United States when I worked in Detroit so um, yeah I've, I've definitely got a lot of experience in uh, accessible design for sure who's my favorite architect Oh man, I, I can't pick one. Can't pick one, but I can tell you a few. Um, the the first. So let's start here. The first one that had like massive, massive impact on me. Okay, was Douglas Cardinal. Um, if anybody, if Ottawa is still in the house here, 
Um, you should know who Douglas Cardinal is. Um, and anybody, um, if you don't know Douglas Cardinal, look him up because his buildings are absolutely beautiful. Um, and I love Frank Gehry. I know it's cliche, but I absolutely love his work. Um, I, I, I don't know how you can't love Frank Lloyd Wright. Um, the guy was a genius, certified genius. Uh, I love the work of Zaha Hadid. Um, she uh, passed away a few years ago now. I don't know. Losing COVID made me lose track of all time, but I don't know, five, ten years ago, something like that. She's absolutely brilliant work. The practice still goes on without her. Um, but um, yeah, just beautiful buildings. There's a company called Big, Bjark Ingels Group. Um, they do some very, very cool stuff too that I absolutely love looking at. So uh, Sir Norman Foster, total respect for Sir Norman Foster. I don't follow his work a ton, but he is absolutely uh, a legend and an icon, that's for sure. Uh, it's not wheelchair accessible. It's really hard to get. Uh, I'm in a wheelchair and never seen a wheelchair accessible house before. The apartment I'm living is not. Oh, man. Yeah, so what What I know, so d let's talk accessible design for a minute. I used to do a presentation um, called The Invisibility of Accessibility that talked about the building code requirements for accessible design and how um, most people don't even know what they're even doing or, or looking for, for, for barrier-free design. For example, um, we, if you've ever gone to use a public bathroom anywhere and they have the garbage pail right next to the door. So, you know, the door opens like this, you know, in a room and they've put the garbage pail right here. Th that is like uh, very difficult for a person in a wheelchair to open that door because they're relying on the space to maneuver, to get close enough to that handle to open that door. And um, that's a very, very uh, tricky thing for a lot of people. 15% units are barrier free in new condos. Yes. Yes. True. But are, are they, I, I don't do any condo work, especially I don't rent condos out to people either. Like do, do people, will they just rent those out to anybody? Like if, if, if all the other units were gone and there was one barrier free unit left, would they still let anybody rent a barrier free unit? Uh, or they reserve, is there some kind of, how does the operation on that work? I was always curious. Yes to anyone, unfortunately. Intr okay. So that's, uh, <laughs> I wonder if there needs to be some kind of legislation or rule on that, you know, maybe, maybe drop it from 15 to 10% and, and reserve them or, or something like that. You know, what do you guys think? That's, that's an interesting uh, point. But if it's pre-sale, they're normally held back until a certain point. Okay. So there, there is, there is some opportunity there to, to uh, make sure that they land in the right hands. Okay, cool. So let's get back to, <laughs> the why. Uh, once it's sold, it's up to everyone. Okay, that's I, as long as there's something in place, right? I mean, um, it's a really tough decision to make, but as long as there's some some things in place for it, that sounds pretty cool. Okay, so now what we've got left here is bedroom space and living space. So we already have one bedroom here. Let's. Um, I wonder if would it be cool. Because what I really want to do, guys, is I want to keep this pool exposed. I don't want I don't want opaque wall on either side. I want I want this glass and this glass so people can see this pool. Could be a hot tub too, whatever. It, it can shrink. It could grow. Yeah, the the bedrooms are coming up on the left hand side for sure. Um, and how I think those might shape up, I might do this and come just past this pool so that we can have you know access to the patio there. And yeah, then maybe create, you know, a couple of bedrooms here. Now we are going to end up with some quirky angles to these rooms just by the nature of the, the shape of the letter, but that's uh, whatever. There's no judgment on that. You guys all understand what the point of this whole exercise is. So um, yeah, let's call this a bedroom. Let's call this a bedroom. This bedroom, so the way I look at this too, guys, this bedroom is wider This bedroom than this bedroom because there's a hallway running through here. So we've got a little bit of space we can afford to cut off at the end there. And maybe we have, you know, double closets on that end wall uh, if we'd like. This could be, um, this could be a bathroom. I'm just thinking now if that, does that, 
bedroom get its own bathroom or maybe this is master bedroom I might be able to flip that oh no I, I, I prefer this one kind of it feels like it's got better lake views so no that that's what's happening there so bedroom bathroom okay let's let's leave like that like that for a moment kitchen corner of bathroom bedroom two are you we might need to hang out because that's exactly what I was, what I was thinking. That's what made me say like, oh, there's going to be some quirky shapes here because that, that kitchen was going to go right there. I was worried about the door, the, the like just kind of walking into the kitchen. Um, but I would do a big, long, cool island. Um, let's shorten that up a little bit. Um, you know, table, something like that. And then we would have, I don't know, is this a fireplace focal point down at the end, guys? Could it be maybe a nice sectional sofa there? Fireplace there. <laughs> Design this stuff all day. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> but we still, we might have similar methodologies of how we arrive at this stuff. So cool. Star Princessa? Yes, teach me. What do you need to know? What do you need to learn? We're here to teach. I'm not here to, I'm not here to hoard information. What do we got here? Do you have to be skilled at drawing to do this? Um, you have to be, well, yes. Uh, and the reason is you have to be able to get it out of your brain and onto paper somehow. Uh, drawing is the quickest way to do that. Um, you can rely on software, um, but you still have to it still has to pass from that fil through that filter from your brain to something and onto paper so that other people can understand what it is you're trying to do. Um, it's really hard to explain buildings in words. Um, but uh, yeah, so drawing, drawing helps. Um, the better at it you can be. Uh, like, I mean, I, I, I would say I'm, I'm pretty good, but I'm not the best by any stretch. Um, but it, this is a very typical meeting. So you guys being here with me, sharing this with me, is like me being in a meeting with my clients and we're talking about ideas and changes. You have to be able to keep up with that conversation and, um, you know, be able to, to draw along with them at the speed of the, that the ideas are, are being shared. So that's, uh, yes, drawing is important. Um, especially for this part of the process. Um, let me grab some comments here. Three sided living room. Yeah. That's what's happening. Open up glazing on end walls. Yeah. So did I see somebody saying get the fireplace out of there? fireplace on right wall. Yeah. So the, the, what I don't love about that is fireplaces. People generally like to treat as focal points. And if we, I feel that the, because this is a lake house, the emphasis on the view is going to be out that way. So to have a fireplace behind you is kind of a, um, I don't know, might feel kind of awkward to have that behind you brings up the conversation of a television as well. Is, is that happening here? Um, you know, I think, if designed correctly, we could do a long system at the end that was maybe low, like a long, so here, let's draw an interior elevation of what that could look like. So if that's that, you know, maybe it's a low, um, you know, something like this, maybe it's a long linear fireplace here. Maybe there's some open shelving here. So this is fire. Um, maybe it's a TV sitting on top, like, you know, stand on top but all of this could be windows behind it. Uh, or maybe there's no TV or maybe the TV kind of rise, comes down from the ceiling or, you know, something like that. So um, that could be an option there. Um, but yeah, th those are kind of my thoughts on that. When, when, especially when you're on the water, you have the view of the water, the view of a fireplace and the view of a television all competing with each other. And then, they're not all being used at the same time. So you're probably not having your fireplace on in the middle of, the, of a hot summer. Um, the view of the lake generally doesn't work at night because it's probably dark. So you're not seeing that. So it, it, they're always changing, right? So what, what do you prioritize and for when? So back to some comments here. Oh, you're very welcome, Star Princess. I don't know, I don't, I'm not sure how to pronounce your handle, but you're very welcome. Um, Oh, and thank you for the follow too. We do a ton of this. So stick around if you like this kind of content. We'd love to but have a sofa facing the end wall, one backing end wall and two chairs facing fireplace. 
Oh, so what I think you're saying, because we just all agree that it's hard to talk about buildings in words. If you wait a sofa there, a sofa there, and two chairs here. So that way the view towards the fireplace is the focal point. Double-sided fireplace on pool wall. Ah, that's cool. That could work. Very, very cool idea. Put the fireplace back. Your idea sounds awesome. <laughs> okay, cool. Done. DIY, you've got a little number one badge next to your name, which probably means something really, really good in, in your interaction with me. So you're going to win. You're going to get your way right there. So we're going to put that back to a sectional. Uh, coffee table, something like that. All right. And then that's going to open us right up to here. And don't forget, guys, that's a view of the lake, too. You know, it's not just like, you know, views are, are, are a wide spectrum. It's not just like you're looking down a tunnel. All right. The free outdoors has just joined. We are talking about the outdoors. Love your opinion, if that's what you're passionate about. So, kitchen, um, how are we feeling about, like, literally walking in and seeing the kitchen right away? Uh, something about that's not feeling right to me. Um, we do have... I don't know. It might just have to be for that. I don't, I don't want to put a wall here or anything like that. Um, thanks, Joey. I appreciate it. Shift entry up a bit. Like, so you're kind of entering into the, between the two spaces could do that. But then this gets, this gets kind of weird too. After, um, do you pay for Revit? Absolutely. I do. I pay a lot for Revit because I have four licenses in my office. So we are, uh, and you can't buy Revit anymore. You only, uh, you can, it's like every other software almost has gone subscription based. So we pay annually for our Revit use and, uh, they don't give it away. They just don't. But, uh, it's worth it. I mean, it's, it's like, I, I got an engineer friend tell me one time I was complaining about the cost of software and he says, well, what are you going to do without it? I said, nothing. He says, well, yeah, that's, that's your whole backbone. It's, it's like a carpenter without a hammer. You know, you just, you can't complain about the cost of it. You just have to roll it into your work. Um, add another bank account. It becomes a U shape. Yeah. That is a solution. Absolutely. I love an Island though. I always, I always try to get an Island, um, into a design. Uh, and even this wall could be a really cool feature wall. It doesn't have to go right to the ceiling. It could be, you know, stop at a certain height. Um, so yeah, we've got, we've got some options for the kitchen. That's for sure. Let, let's all agree on that. So shift entry up, but large glass entrance. Yeah, we, we could do that too. I think that entry is going to end up somewhere, you know, in here entry. However, however we decide to do that. And that might have a, uh, not might, it would be influenced on the approach to the house. You know, how do we want this um, uh, driveway sidewalk thing to shape up? That's the formal name for it, by the way, driveway thing. So I'm running out of room on the page here, guys, but pretty soon I think we're going to be ready for some ink and, uh, you know, get this, uh, get this jumping off the page a little bit with some color and line weights. Some radiuses there. Guys, that's a floor plan. That is a floor plan. I meant your shape with the eye. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, I see what you... So, like a peninsula that's kind of attached to the rest of it? Uh, have you used Chief Architect? I preferred it for home design when I was doing it. I've never used Chief Architect, but I've heard the exact same thing. Um, Revit is not great for uh, residential design. Um, and I've heard that Chief Architect is, is much better out of the box for residential design. Um, but you, you can't you can't learn and buy every software in the world, right? So at some point, I was introduced to Revit. I kind of started working with it, got pretty good at it, and then I just made it work for me. Um, to go back and relearn a whole other software now, if I don't have to, would just be probably bad business on my part. But, um, you know, here we are. But I'd love to learn more about uh, all softwares, especially if I didn't, if I could buy them, if I didn't have to subscribe to them. God, can you become an architect without college? That is a question that is region specific. So um, architecture boards are generally uh, state or province provincially mandated. So it would depend on the rules of that or their governing body. So I, I think you can, um, but I think it's a very, very long process. Somebody was telling me the other day, I think you need to, uh, in certain states, you need to show proof of 12 years of working experience to to make that happen so that um 
that's a big commitment. You can go to school quicker, <laughs> but if you're working for 12 years, you're making some money too. RAIC, I think it is. Yeah, they they have a, um, oh, what's it, exact? Um, pro, the program's exact, E-X-A-C. Um, I, it, that came out after I became licensed, but I know something does exist, but I think, correct me if I'm wrong, it's heavily dependent on uh, work experience or international training, which is a whole other conversation. College or university for architecture? Um, that is university. Uh, I, although I do have a college diploma too. I did a college diploma and two university degrees um, because I, college gave me a very technical background. I actually worked in a, on a job site for years prior to going to college in my teenage years. Went to college, got a good technical background, and then went to university and learned uh, sort of the creative and more of the ins and outs of, of architecture. Coffee bar built-ins where your existing door is and move door up, keep the island. Look at you. So what I think you're saying is if we keep the, that part of the kitchen U-shape, do an island there, the entry doors get moved up here, and then you're saying coffee bar here? Is that what we're saying? How did Tadana Ando become one from boxing? <laughs> I don't know. Um, I don't know his his journey, <laughs> but uh, he he I know year like I don't know how old he is. I think he's, he's I think he's on the older end. I know once upon a time it was much easier um, to become licensed uh, than it is now. So they, it's it's very very difficult, uh, and it's a long long expensive process to become an architect. So if you're going down that road, um, I really hope you love it. And uh, bingo, yes, awesome. Um, and uh, yeah, you, you just better hope you love it and talk to people who are in it, ask them, get some opinions, get some feedback. Um, I got, uh, I, I posted something the, the other day about um, people only getting into architecture for money, like uh, as their primary concern. And I don't, you know, I got uh, some really harsh comments back, but I think it's, um, it, it's a profession that you have to love. I, I don't know anybody that can go in and fake architecture for eight hours a day and go home. Like it, it doesn't, it doesn't feel like something that you could do. Um, and I don't know the point, the point in life is what to be happy, right? I mean, you want to make money, you want to make a living, but you also, you know, what good's a million bucks if you hate your life. So I'm a certified Revit professional, no college degree. I'd love to work for, for you are a certified Revit professional. Very cool. Very, very cool. I'm not certified, although I did just start looking up. I was going to take a course on uh, family creation. Uh, I want to get better at building custom families for my projects and, um, you know, take my Revit, my Reviting skills to uh, the next level, to be all cliche. So what do we think, guys? Do we have a floor plan yet? Is this a plan? You know what I need? I need my ruler, not the scale. Do you guys know the difference? This is a scale. This is not a ruler. For money, what money? <laughs> so you're familiar with the, the, the jokes, right? I know some people, um, but it's like anything. I don't know. I don't know. Like I, I, I had this thought today and I made this note. I have a, a file on my phone that I keep all my TikTok ideas on. And I was trying to think like, is there is there a profession like everybody seems to crap on their own profession right and i'm like is there one where like do all like doctors say um you know don't be a doctor or, or do become a doctor like what what profession absolutely thinks that they're awesome and that they've got it all figured out um because i you know everybody just seems to think that you know they wouldn't a lot of people that i know would say oh you know don't don't get into whatever their profession is real estate teaching you know engineering um and I'm like, I don't know, man. I'd, I think I'd recommend people get into architecture because if if there is an interest in architecture, it probably means that you you've got something in your soul that needs to needs to come out. Don't do single family homes for the money. See, I do single family homes. I do single family homes all the time. I have a staff of four people. There's me and three others. All we do are single family homes. There's a way to do it. There's absolutely a way to do it. Um, I just. Uh, I just think you got to have a plan and a plan of attack and an approach and a marketing plan and, and how you want to do it. But um, do condos. Yeah. I, I, uh, I designed a condo like five minutes before COVID started and then the project got tanked. So my last condo experience kind of fell, uh, got, got a little deflated. Uh, JV K I L where are you, where are you chiming in from? 
do condos with flying money. Yeah. Um, but I hear condos are really subject. I, I, I don't do condos, but I hear they're uh, targets for litigation often. So I don't know if that's good or bad for some people. Um, Toronto and Barrie. Okay. Oh my God. So you guys are, are condo central then. Excellent. Um, okay. So how about, how about we start to decorate this guy a little bit and get, get him, um, you know, looking more like a floor plan. I mean, try to do a little more contextual stuff too, like, um, sidewalks and, and, uh, and whatever either do boutique style or mass producing developer yeah i'm i'm more in the boutique end of it but i i used to work for the mass producing developer and there's definitely money in that too litigation against architect or building contractor um from what i've heard <clears throat> it uh, it could well it could be both really um so i don't i don't know a ton about it i'm not going to stand here and uh claim to be professional i'm just saying in general this is this is what i've heard but maybe some of our friends on here that know a little more about it architect is always first yeah uh we need more courtyards in architecture nowadays yeah i'd be uh, so um keezy are you um easiest to find yeah it's harder for architects to f close up shop and move to barbados um so yeah i do um uh back to keezy's point i've got a whole uh, series of floor plans based on letters of the alphabet and a ton of them have courtyards just because you know of of the you know an, an a has a little, little triangular center and stuff um so put some trees is that a tree that's a tree yeah um let me gonna make me draw my circles by hand hold on one second let me see if i can find a stencil somewhere to help me draw these draw these circles let's see this here so i would probably see a tree going right here maybe you know a cluster of trees right here um you know love to decorate not decorate but um sort of lush up that that main entry walkway um could have a few parking spaces there or a basketball net you know whatever whatever the kids are into guys i think we have a floor plan We've done two floor plans today. Were you guys here? How long have you guys, how long have I been on this thing? Where's the timer on? It doesn't even tell me. I just keep talking. We did an L floor plan to start today and we're getting into a Y. This was a lot more fun than I thought it was going to be. I think at one point I was afraid of tackling this one on a live, but here we go. Bedroom two could be a bit smaller than add another bathroom. So primary has its own. Yeah. Yeah, totally do that. Or it could just be because, because we have a bedroom up here already, it could just be a two bedroom. You know, we could do a powder room here and then dedicate the rest of that space to ensuite and walk-in closet. Um, yeah, there's kind of a few ways we can slice this. Uh, again, depending, we don't have a client, so we're just uh, sort of speculating on what we can and can't do. Uh, some questions here. How long have you been doing architecture? I have been um, self-employed since 2011. Actually, last year was our 10 year anniversary, so we, we put out a book uh, of our work. Um, so yeah, 2011 was when I went out on my own, um, but I've been working for, for architects since 20, or I'm sorry, 2005. And prior to that, I had worked for a um, contractor um, doing single family dwellings uh, for them too. So um, yeah, that's how long, I don't know, 25, 30 years, uh, no, not 30 years now, 20, 20 years or so, 24 years. Um, I know you've been watching from the beginning DIY Zona. I don't know. How do I even, I don't know how to pronounce, how can you possibly relate to me how I pronounce your handle or your name or whatever, but yes, you are awesome. Thank you for being here. How long have we been on? Are we like hour and a half, two hours now? It's been a long time. Uh, opinions on architectural technology. Um, I love architectural technology. That is what my college diploma was in was architectural technology. So that, that was the beginning of my post-secondary career was our architectural technology and i absolutely love it because you get a ton of technical experience um that you can then apply in your future studies or in the real world so i definitely love architectural technology oh thank you very much for the congratulations i'm good friends with 25 letters in the alphabet but i don't know why joey are you just making notes here trying to make puns with the letter y i appreciate it very cool 
are you familiar with the Sarasota School of Architecture era? I am not familiar with it. Uh, uh, Arizona, but without the airy. So Zona, DIY Zona, cool. All right, I'm studying architectural technology. I'm absolutely loving it so far. It's brilliant. Right on, can I call you Pink? I'm just gonna call you Pink. Um, where are you studying? I feel all architects should do tech a thousand percent. I'll take it a step further and I think all architects should do uh, like mandatory job site uh, construction, labor, like go, go haul two by fours. You tell me how you feel um, <laughs> after that. Um, maybe I'm a bit, um, uh, because that's how I started. I feel that's how that brought me a lot of good experience. I'm from Glasgow in Scotland. J Joey, Pink, we have two, two people from Scotland on the, on the, uh, on the live today. That is awesome. How cool. I, I need to get to Scotland. When I get to Scotland, will you guys show me around? I'll skip the job site part. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's hard work, but you definitely, you get an understanding of, of, of things. It sucks. It totally sucks. I swept more. I, I started as a 13 year old on job sites, sweeping houses and, you know, job site cleanup, but you know, you're around, you're around it. You know, you see how, how bricklayers are working. You see how plumbers are working. You just, you just see how materials delivered. You just, you just see stuff. Right. And so, uh, might as well do it while you're a young, dumb teenager. And then, you know, <laughs> growth, grow to avoid it later. Tour of Glasgow architecture soon. Come. I, I would love, love to come to Scotland. If I ever do, if I ever do, I will. Not if I ever do. I will be there one day. And when I do, maybe I'll, I'll go live or something and let, let people know I'm coming. And then maybe some of my new Scottish friends can show me around. Um, but my dad is a developer, so I get a good understanding. My dad is a developer too. Very cool. So, yeah, so you know, so you, you have all the secret information. <laughs> Not secret information. You know what I mean. You, you just see it from, from other perspectives. Um, would a vestibule entryway spoil the lines of this house? Yeah, I, I think where these final doors have ended up, like right here, I don't know if I want another set of doors here. This is a pretty open space. So um, let's, we're going to ink it up guys. And maybe we'll, we'll call it a night. What time is it? It's quarter to six where I'm at. Um, and I know everybody's from a different part of the world. Some people have already gone to bed. I know we had some, some Irish friends that are off to bed already. Um, go to Edinburgh, best school, best architecture in Scotland. Yeah. I don't disagree with that. An external vestibule. Um, so that wouldn't be a Y anymore then. It would kind of change our, our our shape. So I totally hear what you're saying. But again, part of the the this the exercise is really like staying within that like hard boundary of what the letter is. So um, yeah, we could do that. Um, but on this case, we're going to keep it as is because we're going to wrap up and let everybody get on with their weekend. So we've got that mine room here. Let's throw some shelving there. I gotta get pilot. Somebody tag pilot and tell him to send me more pens. I need more pens. Houses don't need vestibules. Um, no, they don't. But we were we were talking about the vestibules earlier. Um, and as another name for mud room, I'm not sure if you were here at that time or not, but. Um, what diff what people call vestibules or mudrooms in different parts of the world. So we've got the kitchen there. Mm, that this bedroom is a really quirky shape, but it's kind of kind of what it is, right? And then we've got a bedroom there, and something like that. Put your bedroom door there. And something like that's going to happen. Edinburgh Victoria Housings have a great tradition of vestibules. Oh, that sounds so cool to go check out. We should start raising. Instead of people sending like little uh, roses and diamonds during these lives, can they just send plane tickets? Plane tickets? Is there a button for a plane ticket? Because I'd really like to go back to Europe. I haven't been in a few years. It's been. Uh, five years since I've been to Europe. We went and spent a few weeks in France a few years ago, and it was magical and awesome as everything could be. And then, um, yeah, maybe straighten the right wall of the bedroom. You mean this one? 
Um, the reason I didn't straighten that out is because I'm keeping it in line with this wall because that is the wall that's dictating the shape of this open living space. And I'm trying to stay true to that. Um, so um, yeah, that's what, uh, that's the reason I made that decision. If you, so a trick that I would do if it's, if it's driving you that crazy and you need to, to deal with it um, or address it somewhere you want more um, 90 degree corners in the bedroom, I would parallel to this wall, I would draw another wall here and I would try to find a point where maybe, you know, it was deep enough to be a closet. And then maybe here it could be like built in shelves or something like that. So the room would feel squared off, but you're still using that irregular space for something um, that, that doesn't have to be 90 degrees. Um, when is your next live? And do you have a schedule? Joey, I don't have a schedule yet. Um, my next live, I'd love to do it tomorrow. I'm absolutely having a blast at these. Um, but uh, I don't have a schedule. I've been trying, I think the whole last week I did, I did around uh, noon Eastern Standard Time. So let's say six hours earlier than right now, whatever time that is in Scotland, I'm not sure. But yeah, I want to start doing these. Um, I want to try to do like an hour a day, like spend my lunch hour um, just sketching and, and meeting you guys and chatting with everyone and seeing, um, you know, seeing where things can land on these sketches. There's no such thing as a 90 degree wall in a house anyways. So that's exactly accurate. Uh, yeah, it, this is kind of a, um, kind of a fun exercise here. That's for sure. This has been a fun one. That was kind of boring if I'm being honest with you guys, but this one, well, it wasn't boring, but it's just, there's it's not uncommon to see an L shaped house. I don't think. So we've got that going. My watch is vibrating and telling me I need to move because I've been sitting for too long. So, dang it, I just got here. Maxine, how are you? Thank you for being here. Don't say dang it. We can hang out a little bit longer. We're good. We're all good. So we're going to go parallel to that one there and parallel to that one there. Um, and that's going to be our pool. And then we are going to go, I mean, this this back patio doesn't does not have to line up with the back walls. Uh, I'm, I'm glad you're great. That's awesome. Thank you for being here. And uh, I know you've been chiming in on a couple of my posts lately too. I appreciate your comments as always. So thank you for being here. Uh, if you want to get caught up to speed today, um, we did two floor plans today. I can't, uh, here, there we go. So we did an L. Um, it is what it is. That's what we did. And then, uh, then we made a Y and then everybody made a bunch of Y jokes and it was awesome uh, and funny. And this one's kind of a quirky plan, which I'm, I'm really enjoying. So um, superb stream. Oh, thank you. Uh, Andy is Yoda. <laughs> Love these names. This is awesome. Yeah. So I appreciate you calling this a superb stream. We're trying to do a lot more of these. So, so follow along. We'll be announcing them soon so you can be notified. Uh, look at Veta spa roofline when you get a chance. Most complicated roof I've ever done. All right, I'm gonna. Where is it? V e t t a. Where Where is it? And, uh, I'm just writing it off to the side here. That is spa. Uh, uh, hope you're doing. I love these. You're so inclusive. Oh well. Thank you. That what a nice compliment that is. Yeah, I. Um, to me, architecture is for everyone, right? I mean, everybody's got a got an opinion. Everybody lives somewhere. Everybody, um, you know. Uh, everybody is somebody, right? So I I love talking architecture and including and chatting and getting to know people. So um, Maxine, I'm, I'm grateful that you're here. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Um, Horseshoe Valley. Okay, you got it. I'm checking it out. Not right this second, but um, I will when I get a sec. Really cool plan. I'd love to live here. All right. It's yours. Here, where do I put the sold sign? Sold. A little bit of grass there, a little bit of grass there. There you go. It's yours. How do you stay motivated? <laughs> um, can I can I give you the cheesy answer? You want the cheesy answer or you want like the professional answer? Because I'll give you either one you want. Um, skylight above the kitchen. Yeah, totally doable skylight above the kitchen for sure. Or some really cool ceiling design, raised ceiling that kind of runs that whole length there. Uh, the main building is curved and has two different slopes at the end. Yeah, that sounds crazy. Passion. Yeah, totally. Passion. That was my, that was my answer. I absolutely, absolutely love what I do for a living. Like I wake up in the morning 
and I'm excited to go to work. And when the work day ends, <laughs> cheese, cheese from Zona. Um, I, so here's the cheesy answer. I absolutely love what I do. I think I, um, you know, when people say, oh, you know, love what you do and you never work a day in your life. I absolutely love what I do. I, I can't, um, it's just, I, there's nothing else on earth I could imagine doing. And I get to do it for a living and people pay me money to come up with ideas and solve their, their living problems. And it's, it's absolutely, um, it's absolutely a trip. Um, so that is my, that's my cheese answer. I really love what I do and I really love meeting people that I work for and, and, um, designing homes like the, it, yeah, there, that's my cheese answer. Um, my professional answer is I stay motivated by providing, uh, services for people who blah, blah, blah. I don't know. I don't have, <laughs> I don't have a professional answer. I just love what I do and that should be good enough. Sell the house through metaverse. I, I would erase that LOL. You don't even know. I have accounts set up already and everything. I am on that. <laughs> um, yeah, I can totally see this being done with prefabs. Yeah, absolutely. I, I actually work with a builder locally that does a lot of prefab um, housing. And uh, it's really, it, they're all tiny homes. So it's really, really cool. I would love to do a house on TikTok with you. That could be kind of a cool thing. Do you follow me? Looking at this plan, I think it would be cool if you did a, a bubble letter Y. Oh, we're going to start curving walls now as if these crazy angles aren't crazy enough. A bubble Y. What's a bubble Y going to look like? So we're just going to round the ends, right? Actually, you know what's funny? I have a stencil here. And it probably, so it's probably like that, right? Like just with the rounded ends. I think that's exactly what we're talking about. So here, let's do a bubble Y. Actually, probably have to be a little bit, uh, a little bit fatter than that to make it work. But <clears throat> the curved walls would be interesting for sure. Okay, cool. Um, I, I'm I'm not sure what your name is, JV. I'll just go JV because it's the first letters of your thing. Thank you for following, and maybe we will. Maybe one day we will do one. Corp work can be like a little entertainment space, outdoor bar instead of storage. I'm a few drinks in. <laughs> that is awesome. Oh my god, how many is a few? Be honest. There's there's like not even a ton of people. There's 25 of us right now. You can, we're, we're a safe space. And are you drinking in the garage? There's another Jelani. Okay. Thank you. Am I saying that right? Jelani? Um, a few in. Yeah. I know a lot of people that treat their garages as, um, as outdoor living spaces. Um, I personally don't. To me, it's a, it's a room for your cars. Um, the, your bedroom is a room for a bed. Garage is a room for cars. Um, perfect. Jelani. Thank you. Right. My guess seven. What's a seven? What I'm, Oh, <laughs> seven drinks in. <laughs> awesome. I am 0, 0.0 drinks in. Um, oh, geez. I just committed to closets there and I probably should have tried for a walk-in closet of some kind. Um, I'm going to do a big monster shower, like a big shower there and maybe, you know, vanity here and a toilet here, something like that. And, oh boy, we didn't even talk about pocket doors, love them or hate them, but this gives us an opportunity to do a window on the sidewall. There's a window on that bedroom wall. We are going to do that linear fireplace here. A few steps into the pool. We'll call that back patio, something like that. Um, perfect. As long as you're not drinking in the garage alone or with the door closed, open the door, get some fresh air. Thanks for everything. I'm looking forward to your next live. Vic, Vic, Vix. I'm not sure what your name is, but thank you for following along. Thank you for being here. This is awesome. Uh, yes, I will be um, scheduling them as frequently as I can from now on. So definitely um, check in with that. And I hope to see you again. Uh, I appreciate you being here. Thoughts on rotating dining table 90 degrees. Are you kidding me? You know what? I actually had that thought as I was drawing the dining table. I'm like, is this the right direction for it? Because it's always hard to say like who gets the view and what. So the only advantage to putting it this way is it allows you to keep the space a little shorter in this direction. When you rotate it, um, your clearances change because the tables are generally rectangular. Hate pocket doors unless, unless it's for a live. Oh, Jelani, we're going to be friends because I'm not a big fan of pocket doors either. Uh, what determines where to put a window? The view? Um, so yes, I am a big fan of windows are for looking out of, not looking into. So I always start with, uh, I mean, windows need natural, are for natural light, right? So, the, okay, great, check. We've got that. 
but the it is definitely the view uh, for me, uh, the view out, but privacy in. So I don't want, uh, especially for you know these this bedroom here, for example, is kind of kind of near the road, right? This has a view to the road, so we do want some privacy for that um, as well. Zona, thanks for the rose. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, you know, so so privacy, light, and view are all starting points um, for deciding when or where to put a window. Have to go, but looks amazing. Oh, Jelani, thanks, buddy. Uh, hope to see you again soon. Um, and I will check out your, your Veta Spa in Horseshoe Valley. And uh, yeah, stop by again. Thanks, man. All right. All right. What else we got here? So let's do some, some thick ink. So I usually trace everything first in a thin marker. I use a pilot marker, and if they're listening, they can send me free markers. I don't mind. Uh, Bliss by Sky. Hello, Bliss by Sky. How are you? Thank you for the heart. Thank you for the love. So we can do that like that. That's all opaque wall. This office is going to have a window. This bathroom is going to have a window. That bedroom is going to have a window. That bathroom is going to have a window. We're going to do a wall, solid wall there, so that that bedroom gets some privacy. We can totally do a ton of glass there, a little wall there. We got a lot of glass coming up there, guys, because if you are new or haven't been here the whole time, we're trying to treat this as a lake house. So there's big views off the back, huge, huge views off the back. So um, we are trying to capitalize on that. There we go. Probably cap that there. That's going to go like that. I feel like I'm in, you guys say grade school or elementary school? Probably another regional thing too, but. Um, one tiny thing, kitchen does not have window view of drive-in. What do we mean of drive-in? Kitchen does not have window view of drive-in. Andy, can you elaborate on that for me, my friend? So this is our coffee bar. I think we could still do a little um, window above that. And then here we've got our doors and I probably want a little bit of, you know, some windows there. And then maybe we want, I'm going to go solid wall there for a little bit of privacy. I'm going to turn that a little bit and then we're just going to be all glass here, guys. Just showing these dots to kind of represent window frames. And that'll happen here too. driveway yeah so we don't we don't have that happening right now now i could probably oh you tell me now after we got all the ink in here so what we could probably do uh how are you going to do the corner in the bedroom facing the lake glass i think we could do all glass there and maybe get the bed on this wall here so that even sitting in bed you have a view out to the lake it's my gut gut reaction um for the kitchen we probably because this bathroom has such a weird um, angle to it. You know what I could have done is I probably could have squared it off like this and then maybe try to find a way to get a view, a window out of the kitchen, you know, that way to look at the driveway. So yeah, that's probably how I would have solved that problem, but it's going to stay a problem because we don't have the ability to erase markers yet. At least I don't. So let's put a little bit of color on this guy. This is like, I didn't realize this was like a brand new highlighter when I got it and it's like magical. It's like the brightest yellow ever. Okay, so now everybody's going to watch me do my best seven-year-old impression and just color. But what do we know guys? I'm coloring on the back, right? We all know that, right? Color on the back of your tracing paper so it doesn't smudge your ink. Uh, Ashley, is that, that, is that Ashley M might need more wood in the corner of that room of the shape, more wood, meaning to support the roof. What do we need more wood? Help me out. Help me understand. Yep. Ashley M right on Ashley M 76. All right. I'm trying to get to know everybody. It's pretty hard, but, uh, doing my best here. So. Go with me a little bit. Out of curiosity, would you clean up the angles to your standard 90, 45, 22 and a half? 
when they go to plans. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, so Ashley M, if you are new to me in general and what I do on this app, uh, lately I've been doing um, floor plans in the shape of alphabet letters. Um, just as like a, oh, sorry, that's not Ashley. <laughs> asked that question. Sorry, I'm getting people mixed up. Um, we've been doing um, alphabet letters in the shape, <laughs> floor plans in the shape of letters of the alphabet. And um, the reason we're doing that is not as real projects, but just as sort of fun little design exercises because letters have some quirky um, angles and courtyard opportunities and, you know, just, just kind of fun shapes. Um, uh, thank God, because as a surveyor, I would hate trying to lay that out. Yeah, no, I'd never do that to you. Um, well, I might, but, you know, not, not in this, not this crazy. We have a surveyor here, man. I don't know. I don't know if I've ever seen another surveyor on TikTok. And not not another survey. A, a surveyor. Do you post content, or you just? I would hear given uh, uh, given some love to architects and engineers and making fun of us too. Studs to support the headers. And the, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, come on, Ash. All right, here, there, a little more. It's only so much you can do in an hour to design you know, to make it usable, but it, it kind of works. Right? I mean, uh, you know, we're definitely lacking stairs. <laughs> we got to get to a basement somehow or a mechanical room. Uh, laundry could go in the mud room or in the basement. If we, we'd have to sneak in some stairs somewhere. So there is our, there is our challenge with the Y house. So maybe before, cause uh, guys, what I want you to know is you're seeing these first uh, after after this live, maybe not today, because I've been talking for two hours and I'm a little bit tired, but we, um, I'm going to take these, make videos out of them, um, well, re recreate videos out of them based on the designs that we just created and um, post them on my TikTok. So you guys are seeing these first. So when that Y plan comes out, you'd be like, yeah, I totally know. I saw that one already. You know, and, and this Y plan, I'll tell you, we'll either get 2,300 views or 1.5 million views. There's no in-between for me. My videos either do brilliantly or they flop fantastically. Um, so, oh no, I've missed all the letters. Oh, Bliss, no you have not because on my page, I have a whole playlist um, of the alphabet letters. So you can just go to my um, go to my account while you're there, just follow, you know, it's super easy. And then you can check the uh, all the other ones that we've done. And I even did a special uh, TikTok logo one. So I took the, just the shape of the TikTok logo and made a house, uh, half a house. I did, I did one story. Um, I thought if it did great, I would do the second story, but it, it didn't do as good as I wanted it to. So apparently there's not enough interest. People love the app, just not the house. Um, but you know, it's not always about the likes. It's it's about engaging and kind of creating some content and just playing around with interesting shapes. Now, the TikTok house was kind of cool because it had like a courtyard hot tub that had a little like swimming lane that led to a proper pool. Um, so, yes, Bliss, um, you can absolutely go check out those other um, those other videos. They've been, <laughs> I didn't even realize, but they, they've they become popular in the Sims, like people who, who play the Sims because they're like, oh my God, I'm totally going to do that um, and build that in Sims. I'm like, oh yeah, I guess, guess you could do that. So tree, tree, tree. I don't know guys, what do we think? Is it a house? It's a house, sure. Um, and that patio, geez, I don't know how they'd, somebody's going to get mad at me when they come time to frame that patio, but, you know, let's do some wood slats on that. And I don't know if there were steps down from this, would they be like that? Yeah, sure. While we're at it. Uh, stairs to basement where coffee bar is, that would probably be uh, exactly what happens. So whoever suggested the coffee bar there, um, I might have to, yeah, that would probably work perfect, actually. That's a uh, great call. Yep, that's our stairs. Those are our stairs. And then when dinner's ready, people can just lean over the railing and yell at the kids in the basement, yeah, telling them dinner's ready. Very good idea. Thanks, Andy. 
that one turned out pretty cool. All right, guys. Does anybody know how long I've been on this? I don't have, it doesn't give me like a little counter on here, believe it or not. But I, I think we're like two, two and a half, three hours. This, this is a very long time. Keep up the good work. Can't wait to check out the rest. Oh, thanks, Ashley. I appreciate it. Yeah, we're, we're trying to share with people, you know, how architects work and what the process looks like and how many decisions there are and to make on any given plan. So yeah, I appreciate you being here. Why parking? I imagine this person's going to be popular, so they're going to have friends come over and um, give them a place to put their car. Or we could just take out the parking, put a, make it an area where kids can play, um, you know, safely away from the road. Rooftop outdoor living space. That'd be cool. We can put stairs on top of stairs too to get people up there. Um, okay, guys, I think it is time for me to put some eye drops in my eyes because I've been staring at this tiny little screen in front of my face for uh, a while now. Uh, so, yeah, thanks again, guys. We created our L today, we created our Y today. I'm going to go clean these up and post some uh, actual TikToks about them. And so if you were here and sharing this with me, definitely leave me a comment when you get to that, uh, those posts and we can, uh, we can stay in touch that way. Lake house could be rented by a few people at once with multiple cars. Yeah. That's another good point too. Could have uh, a lot of visitors, you know, people meeting up, family reunions, all that stuff. So guys, I don't know which hand signal to give you all, but, uh, everything's good. Uh, thank you for being here. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. If you're staying up, if you stayed up late to watch, I am grateful. Thank you very much. If you are in a different time zone and you have still a ton of day ahead of you, enjoy it responsibly. Uh, whoever was a few drinks in already, uh, by all means, complete the rest of your night safely. Uh, Andy, awesome. Thank you. <laughs> you rock. No, you rock. Um, right on, guys. We will talk soon. Maybe tomorrow, maybe Tuesday, maybe Wednesday. I don't know, but I'm definitely not done with this. So, Thanks again, and we will talk to you guys soon. Everyone take care. Bye.